Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Mays? Present. Oh. Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Guerra? Present. Ms. Fields? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Mr. Griggs? Present. Ms. Worthing? Okay. Thank you. And we, sorry, we are going to have our Pledge of Allegiance by Jayla, Jalea, and Jada. May I ask for a moment of silence for Senator John McCain? Absolutely. Senator John McCain. And Madam President, I don't think we did a moment of silence yet for Aretha Franklin, so I would add her in as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And if if Pastor Gilbert wouldn't mind giving us our, our blessing today. And just for the record, if there is anyone out there that is a pastor and or minister, is that right? Um, please let us know. And if you would like to give a blessing over the city to start our meetings, we will be more than willing to have that done. Thank you. Whatever the title is, just let us know. Pastor Gilbert, please, thank you. Eternal God and our Father, we thank you for your mercy, your loving kindness, and all your blessings upon all of us. We pray, O oh God, this evening that you will bless our council session as you did in the committee room. We pray, God, that the citizens will have a leeway and a voice to express themselves. We pray, God, that we will move forward, that our city will be as one, and we realize that without you we can do nothing, and yet through Christ we can do all things. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Reading of disorderly persons city code subsection. Any person that persists in disrupting this meeting will be in violation of Flint City Code Section 31-10, disorderly conduct, assault and battery, and disorderly persons, and will be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who prevents the peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disrupting the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest violators shall be removed from meetings. Madam Clerk, are there any requests for changes or additions to the agenda? Not at this time. We do have a special order. Okay. It's a special order to allow Mrs. Kathy Bowles, the Chief Executive Officer of the Valley Area Agency on Aging, to make a brief presentation regarding the services at the AAA. Thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Bowles. Ms. Bowles. And thank you for your patience. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I've not met all of you personally. Uh, again, my name is Catherine Bowles. I'm the CEO of the Valley Area Agency on Aging. And we've not all met, but I'd like to meet you all just to share with you and, uh, a little bit about the Area Agency on Aging. Every one of you have senior citizens that live in your ward. And that's our role, is to be able to provide services and support so that those individuals can continue to stay there, living in the communities for as long as possible. So I know I don't have but a minute, but I have placed before each one of you a packet of information, and it has uh, brochures of what services we provide in the community. Um, it gives information on eligibility on what some of those services may be. You know if your constituents need them. For instance, home delivered meals. 
Let me, let me back up for a moment to ask, does anyone, do you know what an area agency is? No, you don't, so this is a good time. The area agencies are a uh, federally designated uh, entity designed to provide programs and services for six people who are 60 years of age and older in order for us to keep them in the community and live independently for as long as possible. We receive both federal and state dollars to do that. We're the funding source for Meals on Wheels. We provide in-home services, those kinds of things. Um, we are 16, one of 16 in the state of Michigan. So there's 16 of us that do what I do across the state, 622 nationally. So we're all designated in each state. Each state has area agencies. In Michigan, we have 16 designated to do what I do. In your blue packet of information, I just wanted to point out to you, I do have uh, information about uh, 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 our services. I gave you an annual report in your in your packet. I provided you with um, brochures on the different services that we provide, um, and I, I provided information on wellness classes that we offer, like matter of balance for people who have a fear of falling and those kinds of things. We also receive Medicaid dollars, where we can keep people from going into the nursing home and we can provide nursing home-like services, but keeps them in their home. So I, I, I promised not to take up but five minutes. City clerk said that's all I had, and I provided as much information to you as I possibly can. There's a, a, a PowerPoint on the left side of your packet. At the very back of that PowerPoint uh, are, are contact numbers for you. If you have additional questions or concerns, about services and programs that are available in this community. I did want to leave you, uh, before I take my seat, to tell you what we have been doing for seniors as it relates to the water crisis. I received, after two years, I received funding to help put uh, uh, community health workers out into the community to work with seniors one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we worked with AARP, the state of Michigan, who conducted a needs assessment on our behalf to determine what were the needs of the seniors during the water crisis. Once we were able to determine that, I was able to receive grant dollars to bring grant dollars in so that I could hire people to be boots on the ground for the senior population. But what they said, they gave us nine priorities, but what they said they wanted most was information because they didn't feel that they received timely information when they needed it. So our going into the communities helped. We did 557 outreach events this past year, 557. We saw face-to-face -face over 13,000 people in the city of Flint this year. We, are, we have arranged for, um, many of the seniors have acknowledged that they have stress because of the water crisis. And so we, have, we are doing um, group therapy with many of the seniors in the community, and now we're including art therapy. And this is working really well. The seniors seem to appreciate it. They're able to work out some of the concerns that they have. But we are uh, about to finish up uh, our grant period, uh, and uh, we have been, it's been our pleasure to be able to work with the seniors. Had we not been in the community, we would have missed a lot of the things that may have gone unnoticed. For instance, people who couldn't, didn't have running water because they couldn't have their water turned on, their home was condemned, but yet they didn't want to move. So we had a lot of testimonials that we could share with you on what we found when we were in the community, but it's been a pleasure to be able to serve the senior population. You're always welcome to call if you have constituents in your, in your wards that need help or assistance. That's what we're here for. We serve Genesee, Lapeer, and Shiawassee counties. So we receive our funding for those three counties. So I won't take any more of your time. I know you have a full agenda, but you're always welcome to call at the contact information in the back of that uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Kathy, do you um, want to give a phone number in case there is a senior that may see this? Oh, absolutely, thank call. you, mm -hmm. thank you. Madam Chair, the phone number to the Valley Area Agency on Aging is area code 810-239-7671. That's 810-239-7671.
Thank you for your time. Did anyone have any questions for uh, Ms. Bowles before she is seated? Ms. Fields? Ms. Bowles, can you tell me, have you made application for um, this year's CDBG fund or ESG? Thank you, uh, Councilwoman. I'm glad you mentioned that. We have received CBG dollars to provide home delivered meals for those on the wait list in the city of Flint for the last two years. We applied, the last two years we've received $50,000 of home delivered meal money. This year, which will begin, what, October 1, we only received 40. Now, here's our conundrum. <laughs> we are short $10,000, which means now what do we do that we've started you know, providing meal service for those individuals? Are we going to have to take people off the meal program or just people come off through attrition? That's problematic. I had mentioned when we started receiving the CDBG dollars that it's easy to give, but it's hard to take away. And when you cut the funding, it will eliminate some meal service for people. Ms. Bowles, have you made, sent a letter, an application asking to be considered as a beneficiary of reprogrammed block grant dollars? Because we have been asking, and we've had a referral asking for a report from Planning and Development, how much money do we have that is going to have to be reprogrammed, okay? Um, you know, unspent, that we currently have unspent dollars or contracts that were never executed. Oh. And we've not heard back from them, but I would suggest, because when we ask them, they say they go by letters, inquiries made. So I would suggest you write that letter and make it official. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that. Anyone else for Ms. Bowles? Mr. Briggs? Uh, yes, ma'am. I've got five. Do you have five more of these folders? I've got five neighborhood groups that I attend meetings, and most of them are, are 60 and over. I would be happy to find We'll make up five more uh, um, packets of information for you. Happy to do that. I don't have them with me. I'd have okay. to make them up and bring them to you. Okay. I'll but I can do that. All right. Thank you. Be happy to. And if any, anyone else wants m more for their uh, neighborhood block groups, I'd be happy to share that too. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. I got a question. Uh, do your program any kind of way help with the sustainability of a senior in a home or residence, such as home repair, the, the needs to help them maintain or stay in their house because of the fixed income setting of a senior? Uh, no, Councilman, what we do is work with G-Card, who okay. receives those funds. We, we, we try to not duplicate our dollars so that we are right. able to stretch them further. So we don't try to duplicate what they already have available. I know it's not in plentiful form, but, but it is available in the community. But you kind of help point them to Absolutely. where they can go. Absolutely. That's we what make, I was asking. We make referrals all the time there. Mm -hmm. yep. Councilman Mays? Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, this special order didn't show up on the agenda. Who requested this special order? I did. Okay, and where are we at on the agenda? We you are, read the disorderly persons code? I did. We are right before the and presentation of minutes. Beg your pardon? We are right uh, before the presentation of minutes. So we had a request for changes or additions to the agenda. In all respect to uh, Ms. Bowles, I would have liked for us to do that, you know, vote to add a special order and then call her up. Um, that procedure means something, but it's no harm, no foul, Ms. Bowles. That's just some internal talk. I would invite you to any um, finance committee meeting, which I chair in a timely manner, 40,000, 50,000, 10,000 short, we can still move money around. Okay. It do not have to be um, leftover or reallocated money. If I'm not mistaken, we're still in the process where we can reallocate up to so much money if we want to take from here and give to there. We could still get you up okay. to the 50,000 if five or more council people choose. The leftover money, um, through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Fields. There have been some discussions. I know as finance chair, I know it's about 70,000 
that we're looking at now in leftover money. There has been some conversation. Mr. Winfrey and I met with um, Ms. Um, Wilcox. And so we've heard a figure right now, even though it might be some additional 70,000 that's gonna be reallocated. So even though information flows slow, um, some of us are privileged to certain facts and figures and we have to disseminate them to the rest. So a lot of that work is done in finance committee meeting and you would be welcome at any time if you made contact and you want to discuss Absolutely. that in more detail than in the special order, I extend that invitation, let me know and we'll get you on there to communicate. Um, I always enjoy listening to Valley Area Agent, our Valley Area of Agency on Agent. I know y'all inter interact a lot in, up in our ward um, with the Hasselbrink Senior Center. You do a lot of good programs. I'm crossing paths with you. So I would like to know the details of your budget as we get ready to go into those final allocations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they've been made yet, have they? It ain't came before us. So we did get a printout of all of the recommended allocations. Mm -hmm. When we act, they will be final. Okay. And um, I think you got some folks down here who might pay attention. I know in the last council, you had some fighters down here. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like all of your fighters is gone when it comes to the valley area Thank of you. agency. Thank you. And so I wanted to tell you that tidbit okay. so in a timely manner, um, <coughs> and can communicate if need be. <coughs> Thank you very much. I'll follow up with that. Ms. Fields and then Mr. Gear. Uh, first of all, is the money that you've already been allocated, is it ESG or part of the 15% cap on public service out of CDBG for this year? No, ma'am, I'm not is, sure. Is there a way she would know that, Ms. I Fields? Don't know. I'm not sure of that. I just, I'm not sure how the dollars came. We just were notified of the dollars. Okay, it should be in your notification, but okay. maybe you don't remember. And then the other thing is, thanks to Councilman Mays, I believe we did approve an action plan because if we hadn't, August 17th was our, our drop dead deadline, uh, deadline to get it into HUD or lose the money. So I'm pretty sure we did approve and the city has submitted an action plan for this year. But that's something other than the reprogram funds that I spoke of. I'll follow up on the reprogramming. So Mr. Madam, Guerra, yeah, I just want to say, uh, I want to thank you personally. Um, you know, seniors are the backbone to our community, and uh, it seems like sometimes we forget about them in times of crisis, and I'm just glad to see there's an organization. I'm looking over the package and all the stuff that you guys do, uh, so please keep up the good work, and I look forward to maybe touring your facility and uh, maybe doing a ride-along with some of your employees as they, as they go to some of these seniors' homes to see the good stuff they do. Thank you, so, Councilman. Thank you. I appreciate that. Look forward to it. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, through you to Steve Branch, it looked like you was nodding and affirmative that the action plan might have been submitted, but what I'm looking at, thank you, Mr. Branch, what I'm looking at is normally we go over detail on those allocations. That didn't happen this year. Beg your pardon, Mr. Branch? Beg your pardon? So that didn't really happen like I've seen it in years past. It didn't happen this year. So if that time period of them votes is passed, um, um, Ms. Bowles, I'll let you know. I would like to make a, I would like to request an agenda item. I want Ms. Um, Wilcox to come to finance committee meeting and give us those final allocations that you say have now been voted on and then I'm gonna speak on that because there's no way, unless I missed the meeting, and I don't think I did, that those allocations for those different agencies shouldn't have been discussed in detail, in my opinion, with an opportunity to move money around. And if that didn't happen and we voted and didn't do it, shame on us. But Mr. Branch, I'm gonna say through you to Ms. Wilcox and everybody in this administration, based upon the way those things have flowed through us, 
if they didn't flow through us agency by agency in detail without that discussion and committee meeting, let alone then coming to the floor, I got a problem with that. So I'm requesting that that discussion be put on what this, I word it this way, I want the discussion of this recent block grant allocation. I want that as a special order on finance committee meeting and I want Ms. Wilcox present at the next finance committee meeting. And, 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 and when you put the reallocation, since it came up uh, while you was here, Ms. Bowles, Ms. Bowles, I'm sorry, um, then I want to add in that special order a discussion of the leftover money. And I'm going to then try to get that 10000 out of there because I done got mad if that other than went by. So that's going to be my little comeback to try to move 10000 to get you to 50000 since it's been called to my attention and you here. Now, what I can do as an individual, I don't know. But I'm kind of pissed right now. You don't look like it, do. <laughs> but I, I ain't tripping. It ain't the do-all, kill-all but I am kind of tripping because that part for years don't get past this council without discussion of specific agencies and whether or not we can move money around. And so shame on us if that has happened like I'm hearing. It's a surprise to me. Thank you, Ms. Madam Chair. Ms. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear or see Mr. Branch's response. Mr. Branch? Did you state that we have or we have not submitted our action plan? He said we have. We have submitted it. Did that come before council for approval? It did, okay. Ms. Bowles, please don't. Thank you. Don't sit there. Madam Chair. We gonna wrap up and I just wanna I know say we something will. Councilman but the, we didn't, we didn't have to approve action plans and whatever the name of it is. It matters less to me. All I'm going to keep repeating is that every year when we get ready to approve it, it's a detailed <laughs> discussion on which agency is getting what. Now, we didn't discuss how much McCree Theater applied for and how much they didn't get. I know because I looked at the documents, but I'm talking about what comes before a committee and then comes before us for vote. As a matter of fact, last one of the years, you will hear, Ms. Galloway, all of the agencies came into the committee room. Big brothers, big sisters was there. This, if it didn't got passed, is like I say, shame on us, shame on me. But I'm gonna let the administration know it's not gonna never happen again under my watch that I want the detailed discussion of them agencies in an open meeting and I want the discussion where we have the opportunity to move money up to 15% in a category. If that time has passed and a resolution then went through, shame on us. So y'all can double check it, y'all can triple check it, but guess what? I already know how it usually go. It didn't go that way this year and that's under my watch. I'll take responsibility for that if that's what can happen. And then on, by it being called to my attention this day, it might be good for you for 10,000 of leftover money. Thank you. Kathy. Thank you for showing up. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I wanted to um, just say thank you, but also is it true that um, you will be retiring? I am. Okay, so would you like to share that piece and, and who the community will be speaking to that normally yes. you feel that capacity? Thank you for that opportunity. I will retire. Been the uh, CEO of Valley for f most, almost 15 years. Been with the agency 28 years. So I've been with the agency a long time um, and it's been just a joy and a pleasure to be able to serve the senior population of this, these tri-county areas. And I just thank you for the support that I've received from the city council over the years as well as the other county governments as well. Um, it's been just a real pleasure and, um, and I agree with you, the seniors are the backbone and they are often the last forgot to discuss when there's an issue and that was the case with the water 
crisis as well. But again, you have to be at the table. I know that for a fact. Um, uh, I have, uh, uh, I'm pleased to announce, and she's not able to be with me today, but uh, Yashika Albert will be the CEO of the Valley Area Agency on Aging on October 1. But I will still be in the community serving on different boards here and there, and I still want to be involved, and of course I'll still have my hands to be able to send referrals over to Valley uh, after I'm long gone. But um, it's just a wonderful organization, and it can do great things and has done great things for this community, and I know it will continue to do so, and even more so under the direction of Yashika Albert. But I just you. wanted to say thank you. Thank um, you. you have opened my eyes to a lot of things that you don't think of as far as an impact on the seniors where the water crisis is um, as it relates to the water crisis. And I remember being in a meeting where the, the board, they travel sometime from dis different areas for the state. I can't remember the name of that board. The association? The, yeah, yes. where they came yes. and met over at the McFarland House. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the stories you sh shared where um, the opening of the bottles oh, right, and the right. devastation, and right. you don't think about the difficulty right. of people having arthritis right. and having to try and unscrew the cap. You know, right. some things you just take for granted. And how there were actually people that would go in and unscrew the cap enough for the seniors to get to it and, and, and the hope of maybe looking at a different alternative than bottled, right, the water. individual bottled water to a system. And so just things that you just don't think about but because of your passion for that and your experience in that, mm -hmm. it just raised another level of um, awareness. And then another thing that, that you guys taught me that I didn't know is sometimes lead poisoning for seniors shows up like Alzheimer, well, it can, but it's not actually Alzheimer per se. Right. It can be triggered by lead water. Right. Right. And so those were just some of the things that um, I think just cause the better sensitivity, if you will, that you just don't see or know. Mm -hmm. And so thank you very much. Thank we look you. forward to maybe partnering as much as we can oh, before your retirement. Thank and you. um, maybe before you leave, you can do a, a, a soft handoff and, yeah. and introduce us to um, the one that will be okay. um, succeeding you. Be happy to do that. Okay. Any Thank further you so much. questions? Anything? Anything you'd like to say to us before you? No, I've okay. said. I've said it all. Thank you Thank so you much so again much for your support. For waiting too. As Thank well. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great night. Madam Chair, presentation of the minutes. You the chair. Oh. Uh, what is the pl presentation <laughs> signature? <laughs> Madam <laughs> Clerk, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm used to sitting over there. Okay, so Madam Clerk, we are at the presentation of the minutes. Point of order. Councilman Mays, what's your point of order? What about the request for and changes or additions to the We agenda? read that, please. I was telling that? you that we were That's right. That's what you say. You were saying yes. we were past that. Yes, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. So presentation of the minutes. Is there? We have no minutes at this time. Okay. Next time so, we will have. Okay, so we have a public hearing. Okay, this is a public hearing to consider an industrial facilities exemption certificate, commonly known as an IFEC application for the Spintec USA project to be located within the James P. Cole Boulevard Industrial <sighs> Development Park. Public hearing 180398.6. Mm -hmm. Are there any speakers for this public hearing? Are there any speakers for this public hearing? Are there any speakers for this public hearing, this public hearing? What do they do? What are they going to do? They're moving. What do they do? They're moving Steve from one location. You want me? I, can, I, can answer. I can answer that if they want. Oh, that's fine. I'm spent. Do I have the floor? Yes, please. Yeah, I'm, uh, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, Spentech does the, uh, the lines that they actually make automotives on and stuff like that, like the, the assembly belts. Um, they make them, um, and they've been located. they were located down the street. Uh, but now they're just moving their location because they've actually gotten bigger. Uh, they're going, looking forward to hiring more people and fill that facility. And they're working with selling their other property so it's not abandoned with, to another owner and similar business. 
So uh, they're a great asset, and they're kind of off to the side, and James P. Cole is kind of that industrialized area. Um, so it's good to see a, a building being filled. And then that sheet kind of explains it a little bit, too. what an IFEC is the tax break. Yeah. Yeah. So if they are moving, could you say your name for the Arthur Woodson? So they move into a different building, but they're asking for a tax break after they've been here for a while. Have y'all done your due diligence as far as seeing how many people they have already hired here in the city of Flint? Or are they going to hire more people from the city of Flint? It's, it's, it's upsetting that we keep on getting verbal agreements and not getting anything in writing. Can you all do a community benefits agreement where you get it in writing that I promise before you give them a tax break, say you give them a tax break and they, you, they say they're gonna hire 10 people and they don't hire 10 people but you didn't give them a four year tax break, they don't care if you don't give them or extend their tax break again. Why don't you on the front end say, hey, you know what? Sign this agreement that you plan on hiring 10 people before we even give you a tax break. I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, you know, to each his own, but a community benefits agreement, that's what we need to start doing when we start giving out these Oprahs and all these other things. Uh, I'm not just speaking about them. I'm speaking about all the people that come before you asking for tax breaks, and we don't know if they didn't hire the people or did what they were supposed to do. Thank you. Are there any other speakers for this public hearing? Are there any other speakers for this public hearing? Are there any other speakers for this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. Public speakers, Madam Clerk? Um, our first speaker is Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Good evening, Councilor. Mr. Ariel Mitchell. I desire that 759 East Linden Street Avenue on the north side of Flint where the graveyard at uh, Graceline. Uh, about this water pipe, copper to copper situation. My house, I was one of the 15 person that was, was assigned, what well, they were assigned to my house and dug up the pipe and with the, the art of the day out of the equipment, they had to come in my house, they put a camera down my pipes, and uh, take a picture. And if, I think since we had that comfort in that room back there, I think that um, I said I wasn't gonna complain about this, this hole they left in the middle of my yard. But I had this Sunday, I had a, my walking stick, it's only about five foot, five, four foot. I put, I leaned on it and it went, I almost went down in the suck hole, and the church bus was coming at the same time. So I wanted to complain about that, uh, like the guys talking about uh, Martha Brown. I found out she sent her platoon over there to dig around the pipe, since I heard all the information back there. And the guy asked for he 98, he want $98,000 for re liquid damages. And I want to you, Ms. Galloway, to the city attorney, I want you to put me down for liquid damages because it sound like the man ain't, y'all ain't let the man go without paying the guy. And I want $25 a month for a whole year. That's, that's in the contract if, the, if the liquid damages cost. Matter of fact, the day when I went home, I thought they was, they around my house right now, all up in my, on my front porch. I think they made a mistake and tried to tear my house down, but this house next door. And but I didn't want I'd rather be down here to this council meeting and see what they done after I go home tonight and see what really happened. And they left when they saw me coming, but I think it was going to lunch break. They had stripped all the aluminum off the house to put it in and I think they was going to scrap it, but that's how unprofessional these people look. But they look all professional, but but they they act like they doing something illegally. But in back in how I saw Ms. Galloway handling her, that really want me to talk about this reimbursement, but about Martha Brown in her coyotes digging hole, might as well be a coyote, 
digging holes down there because I almost said it wasn't going to split. But anyway, I want you to and I want, I want you to respond to that city attorney with my re liquid damages. Our next speaker is Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Good evening, um, Quincy Murphy. Um, first, before I get started on what I'm going to talk about tonight, I just want to thank everybody who came out to help us um, celebrate Jefferson Reunion Black Arts Festival. Um, Jerry Winfrey um, and her family came out. Um, they enjoyed themselves. It was a great, good time. It was better than I even anticipated that it was going to be. Um, so I just want to thank everybody publicly. There was a lot of people there, so I wasn't able to get to everybody to thank them. So I just want to publicly thank them personally for coming out um, and enjoying with us. But um, I, I had some disturbing news. Um, I had a, got some calls that on 14:20 a.m. they was talking about the charter. And I um, had to go to somebody's um, Facebook page and listen. And then it made me tune in Saturday. Councilman Davis and um, AC Dumas were talking about the charter. So I listened and um, I took notes while they was talking. And um, this misinformation that's being put out into the community, I owe it as a charter commissioner and as a community activist, as a leader to come to this podium and it's unfortunate that I have to come up here and use this platform to denounce the stuff that's being alleged about our attentions as the Charter Commission. One was um, the Charter Commissioners were um, inconducive to the recall. I'll let Art Wilson, if he want to speak on that, because we wasn't part of the recall. So I had to call Art to ask him, was any of the other commissioners part of the recall? Then he talked about the um, ordinance the charter having something to do with the ordinance that is going to enable homeowners and commercial buildings. Ordinance don't come from the charter. It comes from city council and the mayor. And since y'all have been elected, only ordinance that's been passed has came from the charter and the mayor. No ordinance were put in the charter. But if you can find that in the charter, Councilman Davis, please refer that to me because I brought my charter today so that I could try to find, and you just give me the session on what you allege that we put in the charter that dealt with the um, ordinance. Also, it talked about um, it was aimed at poor folks. I'm poor, but I got a rich mind and a rich mentality. If anything in the charter would have had to do something with poor, Quincy wouldn't have been for it. And I'm going to continue to come up here and uh, speak on these issues and denounce this misinformation being put out on a Christian radio station where listening audience is listening and people is believing this mess. I would refuse to sit back and allow that to happen. And the more it happened, the more I'm going to have to keep coming up here and not focusing on the real work in the community to get this out, to let the public know that stuff is absolutely untrue. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mrs. Carolyn Shannon. Mrs. Shannon. To the chairperson, my councilperson, Monica Galloway, to the wonderful council, and the very amazing city clerk, Inez Brown. My mother taught me a word to the wise, Carolyn, should be sufficient. And I don't want to have to come back here again and tell you to clean up Flint. Get the blight out. On Dart and Davison, Delphi East looks like a jungle. And I tried years ago to tell the council, please keep it clean. If you're open for business in Flint, 
You should keep the properties clean. Okay, a word to the wise. Another thing is, if you have a beef with anyone in the world, take that to a private place. Do not kick anyone in public. You were not taught to kick people around. And believe me, I am vintage, and I know what kicking somebody around is. So I'm asking the council, do not kick people in public. Take them off to the side. And another thing that I really feel good about, Walter Scott School has reopened. And I did everything but fall on the floor kicking and screaming to make that happen. So I'm asking everyone to support Walter Scott School because he was a philanthropist and he didn't have any children. Thank you, Mr. Walter Scott. And I would also like to say, we need to build cars in Flint. We can get on our feet. Ask the president, he can make things happen. Tell him we want to build cars in Flint. We want to build military equipment here in Flint. Let's not slow Flint down by bickering. Let's work together. And as far as the mayor is concerned and her staff, stop kicking them around. When you get the opportunity, run against the mayor and win. All the people that kick the mayor around and her staff, run against them. But don't kick nobody in public. You may make a suggestion on how you can run Flint better. Thank you, Madam Chair, Thank Monica you, Galloway. Shannon. Thank you, Ms. Shannon. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Next speaker is Mrs. Shirley Taylor, Mrs. Taylor. Good afternoon. I'm Shirley Taylor. God bless America. And God bless each and every one of us. We're living in fearless times. I don't know if you all know it or not, but we have talked about this water situation and it it wasn't put on the ballot for us to make a decision to switch the water. And there was some talk about saving two million dollars. It has been a thousand times that much spent on this man-made crisis by Snyder, Wallins, and all of their imps. They're not res respectable people to be holding. Those are respectable positions, honorable positions. And to have someone in there to poison a whole city and nobody be accountable for it? All of our lives have been compromised. Every person that's an elected official should have been with Mayor Weaver, the Honorable Mayor Weaver, and Mr. Gilchrist, and Lanson trying to get Snyder put away and all of his imps, all of these emergency managers brought in here. They should all be doing time. 
because there were people that were killed. I know three people that died of lead. Five, because two of them were twin babies, and they were seven months before they were birthed. Nobody is being prosecuted about this. And we need an ombudsman. People shouldn't have to come down here and voice their concerns when we have problems. The ombudsman's office was closed. It was the first office closed. And I'm wrapping up. And it's still not open. We need an ombudsman just like we need a city council. We need the ombudsman's office just like we need a mayor. Just like we need the, ch we have an honorable chief of police, an honorable mayor. And for someone to say, Mr. Gilchrist, that man has been a businessman in this community. I have known him for 40, at least 45 years. He has always been creating jobs for people and is so disrespectful for anybody to say, oh, you ain't nothing. Why didn't he say it when he was in there? You know. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. God bless all of us. We are no stronger than the weakest link. A chain is no stronger than the weakest link. And we should be praying for each other. Praying for each other that we might wake up in the morning and be in our right mind. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. The next speaker is Mr. Arthur Woodson. Mr. Woodson. How you doing? Uh, let me start off by saying almost everybody on this council don't know how to do personal and business. Everybody got to get the last word in. Everybody take things personal instead of doing business. You might not agree. This is what I see. I'm a constituent, so I'm able to talk from this side of the uh, podium and, and voice my opinion. Now, on the other side of it, AECOM said that uh, they just completed phase four. Now, the liquidated damages, in order to give an extension in the RFP, it states that it had to be in writing that the city was giving uh, extension for the phase four. It says this in the RFP. So where are the emails that they even asked for an extension? Don't have one. Now, Mr. Davis, I know you got mad the last time I said this, but you don't work for the mayor. You work for the people. The people put you in here. And, you know, for somebody to say that, you know, you don't, I wouldn't get upset because that's your constituents critiquing you, and that's it. The recall did not have anything to do with the city charter. I keep trying to tell y'all that. I did that because I am my own person, and I felt that things wasn't right. You cannot be a community organizer. Your job is to uphold the city charter and work for the people, not the mayor. Tell me one time that you have voted against the mayor. Never, because you are a rubber stamp for the mayor. And then you're rolling with AC Dumb A, you know, uh, and, and, and the, the worst part, I didn't say it. I said AC, I, I, I didn't say it. But at the same time, he's the same person that did absentee fraud. He's the same person where his sister voted in Texas and his godson voted in Kentucky and he had three absentee ballots sent to his house. And they voted in those, those places. And you following this guy? I ain't told y'all, man, quit putting me down as the type of person that's a sellout because that I'm not. I don't even take money for what I do. We fought for 
four years to get money sent here to, uh, for these pipes. And now everybody's making money off of our misery. They paying a consultant $303 an hour and don't even know jack nothing about these pipes. And then you turn around, they told y'all in, in the committee, they told y'all this, how can you tell me what tool to use to dig a hole? If you say you want it four feet, if I use a Tonka toy to dig that hole, I can use that. It doesn't matter if it's a hydrovac, a Tonka toy, a backhoe, whatever. Whatever I use to make that hole bigger from that curb box, I can use it. It's not about hydrovac, and if you go out there and inspect, you'll see that the hole is four feet wide. And then you can't charge a subcontractor $1,100, and then you turn around and charge the city $1,700. Reallocate the funds, save money. If you don't have any more lead lines, reallocate the money and change the uh, water mains. That's what you can do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woodson. Wow. Madam Clerk. Our last speaker is uh, Pastor Alan Gilbert. Pastor Gilbert. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Vice President Galloway, we certainly thank you for being the acting uh, president today and we fully support you and to the entire council. Uh, I just wanted to say along with Councilman Mays on this thing about the Valley of Aging, I too uh, appreciate what you were saying. Uh, if they came up short and why did they come up short? They've done a lot of good work in this city and I know this personally myself my mother's 86 years old. They have come to her apartment. They have sat down and talked to her and helped her understand about the uh, opening of the caps of the bottles. They've done great work, and they was doing that way before I ever came along. So that is the thing that I would say along those lines. The other thing is I want to also thank, they're not present, two police officers uh, in a domestic violence incident uh, last week that I witnessed, I was uh, very much uh, entwined and involved in it. And uh, one of them officers, his name is Donnie Scott. The other officer, I think his name is Noah Hillsborough. These were two very young men. I think both of them are under the age of 30. And uh, they really conducted themselves very professionally. They were very thorough uh, and they were competent and they meant business. They wasn't playing no game with nobody. And so I just wanted to put that across to the city that uh, we don't have a lot of police officers and obviously we have some young men that put their lives out into the community every day. And so I just wanted to let this council know and the city know that uh, we do have some good officers and they're committed to upholding the rule of law in this city. Um, Donnie Scott, and Noah Hillsborough are their, are their names. Now, along the lines with uh, Brother Murphy, I would only say to the entire council and especially to Councilman Davis, um, you have a right to your own opinions and I respect it. You know how I feel about you. I've told you to your face. But there's only one set of facts that we have to deal with. And one set of facts is, is that Pastor Gilbert supports Mayor Weaver and her administration. But if I don't like what she does, if I disagree with her, I will critique her. That's just Pastor Gilbert. That's who I am. And if I think she does something good, I'll let this council know that she does. And if I think the council is not doing their job, in being the checks and balance against the administration, then I'll say that as well. But Mayor Weaver is the chief executive also of this city. And the people voted her into office. But we need to understand that Mayor Weaver works for us. She works for all of us as taxpayers. And we need to understand that so we have a right to question and challenge what she does. We don't have a right to defame her and to put her name down in the mud. We don't have a right to do that. So I'm just saying so we understand. And also, I think you uh, 
perhaps many of the council people need to, and I, I agree with Councilman Mays. We have our differences, and we will always have them because we're two different people. But it would behoove all the council members to examine the charter and do not let folks lead you around with a hook in your nose. I'm being a little frank here tonight because there's a lot of misdirection going on. And, and I'm thankful that we can do this because you guys are the face of this nation. The council is the face of this nation. It's not just Mayor Weaver. Because there's going to come a time when we're going to come to this podium, we're going to criticize you too. And it comes with the territory. So don't take everything so personal and try not to personally attack one another all the time just because somebody differs with you. And I say this on behalf of Councilman Mays. Yeah, we know Councilman Mays has a big mouth. Pastor Gilbert has <coughs> one too. But that doesn't mean that what we say is meant to do evil. You've got to hear what we're saying. Council Mays, they've been getting on me for years about me running my mouth too. I said, but if I know what I'm talking about and you listening to me, I can't think with your mind. You only hear what I say. You got your own mind to think with. Every one of the council people took an oath to uphold the charter, to uphold the charter. You can't, you can't misdirect it. You can't misinterpret it. You can't put another interpretation on it till the proper time. You must follow it. And I say this and I'm going to sit down. If you're not going to uphold the charter that you were sworn to uphold in the company of all the people in the city of Flint, as for every one of you, including the city attorney, because you are paid by the taxpayers. Pastor Gilbert, if you'll wrap up, please. I just wrapped up. Thank you. I didn't hear the buzzer, you guys. I'm so sorry. Madam Chair. Uh, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I don't know if I can do this in two minutes, but, you know, I listen to the radio, too, and I'm here to tell you even the hearing was misrepresented. That ain't a hearing for Hydrovac. That's a hearing to deal with the flow of money from the state to the city. I keep emphasizing that. And so I don't mind being through in a group of council people when I know from City Hall to the First Ward, I stand alone. I've been standing alone. Nobody can get on the airwaves and group me up in a group. It's gonna be a difficult political task. I ain't said nothing. I called a couple of them. I say, when I need to speak, I will. But I'll be listening. I've been listening in council meetings to folks talk, and I, if you notice, I'd be listening. I know when to speak and when not to speak, and contrary to popular belief, I'm going to have a field day as people try to build their points up talking about me. Build them up. You better get them up, because when I start speaking, I'm going to deflate some balloons. And you're right, Pastor. I'm loud and long, and I ain't never hurting for a way to do it. So that's a problem, and I'm listening. To let it keep going, and we'll see what happens. My job, I have supported the mayor. I done ran for mayor. I done supported the mayor. Might not even run this time. Might support her again. Might jump out early. But that don't mean I'm not going to do some things. We got a fundamental disagreement right now about the use of hydrovac, Mr. Parks. I appreciate your special order in committee, but I'm telling you, you're breaking a record for long meetings, Ms. Galloway. It ain't Councilman <laughs> Mays. A special affairs committee meeting was long, and um, this meeting was long. I think this meeting was long because Pastor Gilbert from the Seventh Ward, and you let him speak like a preacher long. So I'm not going to, I heard that bell go off on me in two minutes. I didn't get a chance to say to Miss Shannon that we did some blight work with Raul this weekend. And I think we better purchase that department, a front end loader with a cloth. Okay. 
and some employees, and I'll be bringing that up in uh, finance committee meeting. I want to make a referral um, to the Mr. city administrator and to the finance director. If that front end loader for blight is running about 90,000 to 150,000, I want to make a referral. We got two front end loaders like that in street maintenance but they can pick up a lot of mattresses and couches and dumping in the blight department. So I want to make a referral to put on the finance committee agenda a discussion item about a front end loader and the employees for the blight department. And I think we can help clean up Flint. And then on legislation. Councilman Mays, you are, you, come on now. Do I me need like you, you did, Pastor. You let me wrap that. up nope. by doing this second Councilman referral. Mays. I want a discussion item on an ordinance change for blight on legislative committee. And this ordinance change, we discussed at last meeting, will do a $500 fine and jail time if caught. Okay, and thank I'm, you. Councilman Mays, these referrals can be made at another time. So. I know, you see the thank different you. treatment, Pastor Gilbert? There's no different treatment, we're on a two I'm minute. I'm just thank saying, you. I'm just saying, I'm a councilman. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm kind of appalled at all this garbage I'm hearing thrown up here at me because of 1420. 1420 been around a while, and so is Mr. Dumas, which is sitting back there. I'm tired of the jealousies I'm starting to hear of these weak so-called activists. Look, let me tell you something. I don't know nobody, I'm gonna say it again, nothing but to love them. I'm not a fair weather friend to nobody. If I'm your friend, I'm your friend. If I'm not, I'm not. When it comes to the man administration, me and the administration, I'm sitting here to help move this city forward in unity, not in division. Because these weak activists think I'm somebody to play with, but I'm not. Let me tell you something. Because Mr. Murphy, because you did that charter, don't mean you're a mastermind of the charter. That was a document to get poor folks out of this city formerly known as Flint. You don't know nothing about brownfield redevelopment. You don't know nothing about the developments that's going in on the north side they ain't got nothing to do with poor folks. Poor folks ain't in nothing that that charter, which they need a document to move forward to, that, that cultural center movement and other movement, and notice ain't no moving on that north side. Because these weak folks sitting up here decide to fight the administration, I'm sitting here to work with them. I'm a strong individual. I got my own money, whether I sit here or not. And I have a voice in this community in all wards, by the way. I, I got to tell you once and for all, Mr. Woodson, y'all leave my name out your mouth. When I get Mr. Dumas, you'll make a mistake to put me on 1420 this week because I unload on them. I'm nothing to play with. I'm going to forever. Wait a minute. I'm not on, nobody's rubber Come on, stand. you guys. I'm when it comes to the administration. Stop it. Right. Yeah. Let me tell you this. Come on, you guys. I'm going to call Officer Metcalf. I'm asking you. You, you got to make your, your statement. And now... Guys, I want to say this. I sat there in blatant Mr. disrespect Mr. today. Again, with Mr. May sitting there, he defended the man because I didn't say a word. Y'all sit up here and had the whole administration sitting here under a so-called, whatever you want to call him, with nothing getting done. And name calling and fell out of control. I didn't say now mumbling word. And I just said to myself, here we go again. How much disrespect you going to do administration? All this high technical stuff, you're always going to have issues you have to make adjustment with. So what it get out of order? You don't need to jump. I don't need to jump in and try to fly an airplane. I ain't never had a pilot's license. Them folks could work that out on their own. We got our own troubles out in our wards. But y'all so-called activists that don't know nothing, Land Bank got their movement going. How does it find dollars flying? You, you Watch this. They shrinking neighborhoods about to do with the first and second ward because you got to have so many residents over in the wards. They studied them on and ain't bringing nothing back. You can smile if you want to, but let me tell you something. You're not smart as you think you are, and I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Mr. Guerra? Mr. Guerra? 
Okay, yeah, I, I, I want to agree with the residents who talked about blight. I think blight's a huge concern, uh, not only throughout the third ward, but throughout the entire city. And I do look forward to looking at some possible budget amendments that may potentially get more blight people out there. I know that we might not even have some of the proper equipment after talking to Raul to get some of these blight things done. And uh, we don't have a lot of staff down there. So that is a concern uh, for not only the third ward, but the city. Uh, in regards to the ombudsman um, not being in place, I remember somebody had mentioned that. Uh, that's now up to the uh, Ethics and Accountability Board to do so. Uh, so the council's job was to appoint the Ethics and Accountability Board, and now they themselves have to come together and choose an ombudsman officer. So that's now out of the council's hands uh, and in theirs. And I, I too see a lot of the uh, arguments and have been called some names on this council. And I just want to uh, encourage everybody that's either up here or out there watching or out there talking uh, to kind of just know that I believe that all of us on this council and everybody in this community wants to see the city of Flint move forward. I just think that everybody has different perspectives on how they want to see that go and have different ideas on how to get there. So don't necessarily defame one another or disrespect one another just because we don't agree on something. Like I say all the time, uh, when I was knocking doors, I don't know me and another resident that will agree 100% on every policy. I don't know that, but as long as we can agree on moving forward, that's what we need to stick on doing. So uh, please, people, just keep, keep an open mind, uh, but if you think something's out of line, say it. Let them know, I'll let your representatives know, but just keep in mind that we all wanna go forward. I hope so, thank you. Ms. Fields. I'd like to say to the resident who spoke about um, Dort Highway and Davison Road, the old Delphi site. I'd like you to know that that is managed by something called the Razor Trust. And I have attempted to get a hold of them multiple, multiple times because they don't clean up the lot. There's a fence all around it in the inside of the lot and outside of the lot. Uh, I've asked the Chamber of Commerce to intercede for me to get a hold of the Razor Trust. And they told me they're just not very responsive. So I don't know who actually sits on the board of that trust, um, but if anyone does, please let me know because I will contact them personally because that does need to get cleaned up. But overall, the message out to citizens is everybody comes here and they complain about blight. They don't like the litter. They don't like the trash. Yet how is that trash and litter getting there? I've seen people open up their car doors or roll down their windows and throw out their fast food wrappers, their uh, drinks, their ashtrays. Um, they've got kids in the car, so they're teaching their kids that that's correct, that that's okay to do that. The only way we're going to eliminate that kind of litter is if people bring back and respect the values of don't trash your own home. Have more respect for yourself and for the other people who are sharing this home with you. Are you done, Ms. Fields? Thank you. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Thank you. My mic is kind of messed up here, so I'll try to talk softly. Um, and to that point, um, Councilwoman Fields, about the blight and the trash in the streets, I would like to make a uh, referral to street and maintenance. Um, I think it's time that we um, street, um, sweep the streets. I've been seeing a lot of um, trash and everything in the streets, and uh, one of my concerns is that it's going to get down in the sewer, so uh, we need for the um, streets to get um, swept, so I would like to make a referral to uh, um, street maintenance. Um, I would like to um, thank uh, Kathy Balls for coming out with the Valley Area Agency on Aging. And I would also like to thank um, Quincy Murphy for the uh, awesome job that you did um, putting together the um, Jefferson reunion. I too attended Jefferson um, years and years and years ago. Um, and I thank you, it was a good turnout, and that's a good step in the uh, beginning of building community. And I would like to thank you for your efforts. And um, that's it. Mr. Griggs? Mr. Griggs, did you have anything you want to respond to the speakers? Ms. Worthing? Okay, thank you. Um, 
It's my turn to respond to oh, the constituents. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, say to Miss Shannon, I too am excited, she's gone, but I too am excited about um, Scott School opening up, looking forward um, to the partnership. Now that the new park is there as well at um, Cook Park, I wanted to um, say thank you to Grace Emanuel. They had a um, cookout the Sunday before last. It was very successful. It was very interesting to see so many cars lined up along the sides, and um, they had a huge turnout. I wanted to say um, thank you to C and J, um, Chuck, over at the, the building right past the railroad tracks on Lippincott, I mean Lapeer Road, that little building next to the abandoned buildings. Um, they had a backpack giveaway yesterday from two to six. So we met quite a few students that will be going to Scott that came over and got backpacks. So thank you to him and his wife and all the volunteers. Thank you to the firefighters, Chief Barton. Thank you, um, you have one of your firefighters and their trucks there and the kids had a great time um, interacting with the firefighters. And then also um, I wanted to say thank you to the Southside Reunion um, organizers. Um, that I know it got rained on, but um, that is always a wonderful event. And um, that's all I wanted to say. And so, what is the pleasure? Madam Chair. Councilman Griggs. I did have something to add, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I don't need to tell y'all how great I am. It's a waste of your time and my time. I don't need to brag about my education. I get my praise from my constituents in Ward 8, and that's good enough for me. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Um, Madam Clerk, any petitions and unofficial communications? Not at this time. Any communications from the mayor or other city officials? None. Any additional communications? None at this time. Madam President. Councilwoman Chair, Fields. Vice President. Our last council meeting was August 13th, okay? Since we've just had a response that there have been no official petitions, unofficial communications, and or communications from the mayor and other city officials, either from, okay, the state, or to the state. On those items that I keep insisting, and we actually passed a motion that said the administration is to, in this section of our agenda, be providing us with any official letters that they have either sent to the state regarding water issues and or finances and HUD, or back to us. And I believe there are some documents on the Flint Action Tracker with letters and communications that have been sent, so why isn't it in this section? Ms. Wheeler, did you Well, I think we had this conversation at the meeting where Council President Winfrey was present, and I, I believe he was going to get those to Council. Like I said, I, can't, I, I don't want to misspeak, but I know we had this conversation because uh, Councilman uh, President Winfrey, um, he's been uh, copied on those, so uh, those could be provided to Council. So I, I know that was the conversation, and. Uh, and, and that's where, where that was at. I, I'm not really sure. I, it seems like there was some type of referral or something. I don't remember it being some type of order, but I do remember that there may have been a request. I'm not sure. Um, so, you know, I certainly look at any request. It, it has been, Madam Chair. And I'd like to say, perhaps rather than sending the council president uh, I mean, that's fine with me if you want to CC him, but apparently the council president is not sharing that information with the rest of council, which I think is the intent when the letter is sent to council president as opposed to eighth ward council person. So I would ask instead that the administration 
send those communications, Mr. Branch, to our clerk who oversees the agenda to ensure that those official communications either from the city to the various state offices or from those state offices to us about those water issues and or HUD issues because that is the motion that city council approved. They give them to the clerk and the clerk can ensure that these are put on our agenda if um, that would be okay with the city clerk. Madam Yet another Chair. duty. It's a protocol question, and, and I would say that uh, in response to that, the initial communication, if they email it or whatever, I think it would be CC to the president from, from a protocol standpoint. And if they could blind copy me, then we can do it as you're suggesting. But it, it would still have to show the president's name out of protocol. That, that would satisfy me. The only thing I want to see is I think these letters that are coming back and forth are really key, really important letters. In fact, I think they may play a part in potentially future legal battles. And I want them in the official record of a city council meeting under petitions and unofficial communications and communications from mayor and other officials. That is a purpose of having this in our agenda. There is no reason to have this in the agenda if that's not being adhered to. What I will do, uh, if, you, if I could, I will discuss it with the city administrator and with the city attorney. So we'll have an answer and something in motion by the next meeting. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Any Madam other? Chair. Councilman Mays, I'm sorry. Yeah, I figure you had forgot about me. Um, I would say publicly, communications from the mayor and other city officials is voluminous. You're talking about emails, you're talking about communications, and I didn't support this motion. And this council is barking up the same tree that some accused the charter of. Realistically, when you come out of an emergency manager law and you short a staff, the clerk asks for a deputy clerk. All you got to do is go to the clerk's office and see the volumes of communications and papers stacked on a desk. You short in every department. The charter revision cut the appointees down to the mayor. Now, I don't care how this council vote. They can vote six to three, and I can be vote no. I'm going to still vote no. They voted wrong on this one. I wouldn't care if they talked to the city administrator, the clerk, the legal department. I'm just like I am with the Charter Revision Commission. I ain't moving if it ain't practical. This ain't even no practical request. How many emails and communicate? We ain't just communicating not through regular mail. We communicating through emails. And it's voluminous. I've seen a pack of emails go out from Miss Fields, and Miss Fields, I was tripping. Somebody sent them to me. They say, you ain't getting them? I said, I don't look at all that stuff. And so I had the secretary pull my emails. I'm tripping. <coughs> We got to learn to pick a project and stick with that project. You're not going to run this whole city with all these communications. What do we want them in? Do we want them in email? Do we want them in hard copy? Do you know my desk and my office is about ready for a throwaway overhaul? A throwaway overhaul because if I need it, it should be kept in the records. If this council have a specific inquiry, request that communication. If you want a copy of the communications dealing with the hydro back or something from the state, request that specific communication. I'm telling you, Ms. Brown, I don't know what y'all come up with, but the day that I see all these communications 
from the mayor and other city officials on this agenda, I'm going to be tripping. It just ain't even practical. So whatever the vote was of this council, six to three, five to four, it was a bad vote. It's a burdensome vote. It need to be rule suspended, motion reconsidered. Who led this effort? Ms. Fields passed the vote like that? I know, I remember when it was voted on. I gave this same speech. I didn't vote for it then, ain't going to vote for it now. Y'all can say protocol, president call. I don't care if I'm the president, the vice president, finance chair. I'm not voting for nothing that burdensome to departments. And every council person who want that much on our agenda and ain't being specific is, is barking up the wrong tree. Now, watch this. I'm going to end by saying this, Ms. Galloway. I'm going to put some folks in a bind. Watch what they're going to come back and say. We didn't say everything. We just said this. I'm already knowing, and I read this council like a book. I wouldn't care if you didn't say anything. I said specifically. So you ain't got to tell me or refresh my memory about the motion. I voted no. I bet you you can find it in the record. But for those who voted yes, end up being the clerk. End up you being the mayor or any city officials. What about the communications I send? You want them too because I'm a other city official. You want my emails? I want y'alls. Give me your emails. Put your emails on here, Ms. Fields, every one of them from other city officials. I want to see them. I want to see the one where you told people, don't vote for me for president. So I want to see every email from other city officials, including you. So I make a motion. And my motion would be that every time we get communications on this agenda from the mayor and other city officials, I want to see all of yours. And I want the public to see all of yours. And I so move it, because I'm finna to show you something. I so move. I want yours on there, every last one of them. So is there a motion on the floor? Yes, a motion Can on the floor. Can you restate your motion? Can you restate your motion, Mr. Mays? Yeah, I don't care if it passes or fail, but my motion say, Ms. Winfrey got it, you better think hard, because you know I ain't for this, but I'm putting a motion. Every time we get these communications, Ms. Fields want public, and on the agenda, I want every communication from her to whoever, because it say other city officials. It don't just say the mayor. It say other city officials. I want to show people who she talking to and to what extent. And every city department, the state, I want her laptop scrutinized. I don't use them. I, I, I know where to find mine too, Ms. Fields. And now I'm going to put the, the radar on yours with your smart talking butt. There's motion but on, you Councilman can do Mays, that. Councilman she Mays, can please. Do that. Councilman she Mays, can do please, that. please, please. I please. joke and laugh too. She can do that, Councilman but she was so out of order. Councilman Mays. No, check her for being out of order, Ms. Galloway. Don't Councilman Mays me. Councilman when Mays, she I do didn't... that and ain't got the flow, don't Councilman Mays me. You're doing fine. Check her. Madam Chair. There is a mo Councilman Davis. I second. This has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah. And Jamina. Councilman Mays. Whenever these communications from the mayor and other city officials show up, this motion is saying I want every communication from Ms. Fields to the state, to the city departments, all them emails, I want to see them. Because what I seen last time was a mess. I seen 50 emails go out to people who ain't even in the city. They went to all kind of folks talking about me, confidential memos. 
So while she asking for, for communications, I want to show people who is this he is asking and how many requests and what the hell going on. I know what's going on and I know the group that runs together. So she want to see communications on this agenda. I want everybody to see her communications. That might slow them down. That's, that's the motion, make it clear. Show these, show hers. Show these, show hers. All of hers, because she only one department. This is asking for all departments, legal, police, uh, dealing with the state, legal. So that's a tall order, and it's burdensome, and it is wrong. So I'm going to show the public on our agenda what she doing. And she should be proud to show that because she didn't stop this meeting on something that's been going on smooth for 30 years to say I want all communications of a certain nature on this agenda. So I didn't stop it to say I want hers on there. And that's what this motion is. Win, lose, or draw. Watch the people who vote, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to say that, and I've said this multiple times here before, that the uh, request for communications in that motion was very specific. It's about key water documents involving the water issues, the water crisis, or water finances that are pertinent to things that we need in order to make decisions. And the reason for it was to ensure that it goes in the public record and that the public has an opportunity to know about these uh, letters that are coming back and forth from the state and the EPA and the city and how the city responds, whether it's about the finances of the water crisis or some issue around the water crisis. Now, I have uh, many, many times when I do research um, and I get documents, facts, I send this in an email and I include all of my fellow council people just to share with them information that I found out. Now, I've only had one council person tell me they don't want any facts, they don't want actually any information, uh, did not send him any emails. So, and that was Councilman Mays. So I figure, well, if he doesn't want to know the facts, um, I won't. Point of information. Video. What's your point of information, Councilman Mays? Is Miss Fields really thinking her brain is remembering what I said exactly? Thank you, Councilman Mays. Miss Fields? Uh, yeah, my brain is thinking. I know exactly. And anyway, I just want to say that, um, you know, I believe Councilman Mays is pretending to be obtuse on purpose. And how he thinks that benefits him, I, I don't know. Point of but information. Mays, what's your point of information? I didn't hear what I was doing on purpose. What did she say? Obtuse. Obtuse. O -B I'm going to look that up. T -U okay. Thank you. I, that's my point. I, I got my obtuse. answer. I'm obtuse. For me, this is a matter of having official records for the citizens and for decisions that are made either now or in the future. It's about gathering facts. It's about city council not finding out about issues only What's if the media. What's your point of information, Councilman May Davis? I'm sorry. How you spell tooth? You guys, come on now. We want to know. O B T U S E obtuse. Okay. Thank you. I can spell I mean. it a third time if that was too fast for you. We Go know. ahead, Miss Fields, please. Okay. Anyway, for me, what this communication piece is about is about council people and and city officials being aware of these really important documents that are being sent back and forth and getting them on the official record. Because too often in the past, the only way city council has known about various issues that have come up is because the media chooses to write a story about it. 
Well, what if there's some item that the media, for whatever reason, doesn't write a story and is really important to a decision that any council person may want to make? So for me, that's all it's about. I never certainly um, said every communication. Um, and I'm a bit confused because first Councilman Mays wants every communication I send, and then he doesn't want any communications I send. So I don't really know where he's coming from, but I do want this council to have official key documents from the state and federal agencies about water issues and water finances. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays, and, and for the, we are going to wrap up. We have not gotten to any city business, and this can go back and forth. Councilman Mays, I'm gonna let you wrap up. And then if there's any further discussion, we are going to move on. Thank you, sir. Technically, you want me to call for the question, I guess. No, I don't. I don't know how much power you got. I don't want you to do anything. I'm telling you that I am going to wrap this up. How can you do that? I'm the chair. And but so, you got a, a, the vote of the majority controls the chair. There's no question. You are on your last comment during this vote. I'm going to tell that you I'm not obtuse. I looked it up <laughs> and I found out that obtuse got something to do with slow to catch on and all of this. I ain't never really, <laughs> I ain't never really been obtuse. Or if I am obtuse, it's a false characterization. You see how I caught on fast to that word? If I was obtuse, I wouldn't know what that meant yet. So my point is this, my motion is very specific. It's specific to you, Ms. Fields, and it's gonna be a learning lesson. If you want all this information from everybody else around the city, I want you to forward your stuff to the clerk so that we can see what you fooling around doing. Because you busy as a bee. No, I can clear that up. Mr. Guerra you can guys, answer that come on for now. you. Councilman she Major. asked Mr. Guerra, do I do or don't want it? I haven't put a motion. Thank you. And I, and, and I want your information. I want your official city communications, because it's a lot of them. I think you got more than me and Mr. Davis put together. You probably got more than me and Mr. Winfrey. Ms. Winfrey Carter, I don't know if you got more than Mr. Guerra. I ain't kept up with his activity, but you sure got a lot. And so all I want to do is this motion is saying, when these that you want show up, I want every one of yours to show up. And I want you to have to go through the process of forwarding them to the clerk. Because, see, somebody else told me about your communication. And when I found out about your emails, I say, well, if she forwarded them to everybody's email address, all I have to do is call um, Janelle. And I called Janelle, and Janelle printed them out, and I was, holy smokes. So what I want to do now, I want to show everybody. Because you think it's easy to put this stuff together. These agendas take time. We just asked for new staff in the council office to give Davina and Janelle some help. The clerk asked for a deputy clerk. Every department is short. And I'm not going to sit here and be a part of this game. And I've been looking at agendas for over 30 years. I used to come and speak on that microphone like Pastor Gilbert and Quincy and, and, and Woods and them before I was a council since 1981. So I hope the motion passed. Let's try it out. If you want stuff, give us some stuff. And we are gonna look at every one of your communications that you are gonna forward to the clerk and they are gonna put on the agenda with official communications from the mayor and other city officials. Because you are a city official and your communications going from the state to Josh Freeman on this letterhead and everybody else is of interest to me because every time I turn around, it's affecting me. 
It's affecting staff, it's affecting agenda, so that's my motion. I show sure hope it passed. Um, one, two, three, four, maybe I can count five. Maybe Ms. Seals, you'll vote to share your communication. Thank you, and I call for the question. <laughs> There's a motion to call for the question. Is there a second? Ms. Worthing? I second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. So there's a call for the question. Um, Madam Clerk, roll call. Yeah, could, could I make, um, I can't make a statement. During, okay. Not during, okay. okay. Sorry about that. This is a vote for Mr. Mays. If the clerk wanted to do something, I withdraw the call for the question. I just thought that the chair said it was over. So I'm going to withdraw my motion to call for the question. I'm not as insensitive as some of my colleagues. Today I ain't. Other days I ain't. So I withdraw my call for the question. If the, honorable the motion clerk has been withdrawn. Something. Madam Clerk, what would you like to say? Pardon? Well, you, you, you have the floor. He withdrew, okay. his, withdrew his motion. I, I think it's important that I let the council know, as well as the public, that we catalog every document, whether official or unofficial, that comes into our office regarding water, regarding every key subject matter that's important to the city of Flint. We do not throw anything away. It is cataloged. So I just needed the council as well as the public to know that. Now, in addition to that, because we do catalog it, it stacks and stacks and stacks of things that get and assigned numbers. we're behind with the filing and so forth and, and so on. And of course, we're behind the with the time, filing and so forth and so on. But at the same time, to find out if we might if have something available regarding maybe what happened in 2011 with respect to the water study. We can find that for you. So I don't want to give the impression that even though it's not here on the document or on the, on the council minutes, that does not say that we do not catalog it because we do. But again, I will get with, with Ms. Wheeler as well as with uh, the city administrator to talk in more detail about uh, the appropriateness of me receiving something that would have gone directly to the president to place on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Madam um, Chair. Councilman Mays, um, you've done your last second, second five minutes. And so I just want to say something, unless any of my other colleagues will have something to say. Um, if I'm not mistaken, also, the, the information should be on the EPA website the communication that some of what is being discussed. Um, Councilwoman Fields shares her information with me. I don't, have, I don't know what my other colleagues do, but um, I do receive the information that she receives when she um, investigates, and I find it helpful. Um, and I point of information. What's your point of information, Councilman? You realize I'm not talking about the information she received. I'm talking about the official communication she sent out. Thank you, Councilman Mays. And many times she includes me in that because... She, point of information. Councilman Mays, what is your point of information? Did she include you in the one that was a confidential memo? Did you get that one about me? I don't know, Councilman Mays, well, but what I can know. tell you, but what I can tell I you, Councilman Mays. That's all my point was. If you don't remember that no, one. No, but what I can tell know. you that Did you we've been it? talking yes about no? this since, I don't remember. Okay. I probably well, didn't read it. remember a lot. But what, I can, but what I can tell you is this, Councilman Mays. Well, did you get that one? Councilman Mays, what I can tell you is that we've been talking about this violation since November. That's correct. And so if, if we are going, if you're going to proceed as if something, if something was done that was illegal, then proceed. Point of information. What is your point of information? Can I make a referral to Pastor Gilbert and the Ethics Committee about it right now, since you wanted to proceed? They that's just not. Got, well, I would so make that recommendation then. That's about fine. That but all I'm saying confidential is. Confidential email, since you want to do it like that. Councilman Mays, I don't care how you so do it. So you order that without objection. Or. Order it. What, what would you like to say, Davina? I 
I want to make that referral to them ben without, May would support it without on what she thank said. You. Thank you, Councilman Mays. So you but what I'm going to say, I already did. Without objection. Without objection. That but what them. I will say is, my point is this. That's my point, Cynthia. Let's not waste this council's time. If you have a legitimate suit against Ms. Fields for illegal documentation being given to all these people, then, then operate in the court system through the city clerk, whatever. But I this go has got to stop. Committed. And so my point is, I'm not going to add anything else to what the clerk is doing. But what I am saying is I am a council person that I don't do what Ms. Fields does. She is, her <laughs> process for the FOIA and all of those things, I appreciate it. It's not something that I do, but I appreciate getting the information. And so my point is, I don't want this to turn into Councilman Mays trying to make a political a, a statement on the back of this council. Proceed through the legal channels I don't if have that really was done. Point of information. So what is your point, point of information? Of, I'm isn't done. it legal for me to make legal counsel referrals? This is the legal channel. Don't you Thank agree? Thank you, Councilman don't Mays. Do you agree Thank that you. this is a Thank legal Thank you, Councilman procedure? Mays. What is the body's pleasure? Madam There's a Chair, motion on the floor. Madam Councilman Chair. Mays. Councilman Mays, your 10 minutes is up. Unless you're you making don't a get motion. You five minutes. It ain't 10. Well, it's you got, you got 10. I gave you twice. 10. How about that? Okay. And then. so the point is either you're making a motion or your time is up. Or I can do a point of order if you keep talking after you give me the chair. What do you want to do? Madam, Madam Chair, there Council is a motion. Point of order. There is. Point of Councilman order. Mays, what's your point of order? Didn't you give me the, the, the flow? It, I did. Okay, but, then why are you talking and I got to be polite and listen to you and Ms. Fields? Why can't I proceed and we might be gone? Go ahead, Councilman Mays. Ms. Galloway, you saying you don't want to put more work on the clerk now. No, Councilman Mays. Let me finish the discussion, my point. No, I had to no, listen to the discussion, you. Okay. The Madam discussion Chair, over this is done. Chair. I sit and listen to y'all. I am ruling that you, you, Why you are that point, you of, this, point of order, Madam Chair. Point of order. What is you your point had of order? Not, I'm sorry, you got a little confused there. No, I didn't. You had I not didn't. given him the I floor. I did call him. You said him, you weren't going to give him the floor. But I called his name, and he insinu he he took that as recognizing him. But what I did say, Councilman Mays, is unless you are making a motion, I am not recognizing you because you have exhausted your time to discuss this matter. And so if you are looking to um, further getting the vote, then fine, I'm calling on you. But if you want to discuss further, you have exhausted your time. I'll say this, Madam Chair. Remember that when you and her go to Finance Committee meeting, I will be enforcing that rule on y'all. Thank you, um, Councilman Mays. I move to call for the question. There's a motion Remember to call for the question. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Is there a second to that? What's he doing? In finance. Call for the I, question. Uh, Madam Chair, I second that motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, roll call. Call for the question. Day, back and forth, them two. I didn't Mr. Mays. Call. Yes. Now they out here calling. Mr. Dad. Davis. Watch finance. Yes. Yes. Mr. Guerra. Yes. <coughs> Ms. Fields. Yes. <coughs> Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yes. Ms. Galloway. Yes. Mr. Griggs. Yes. Ms. Worthing. Yes. The vote is eight yes, zero no, yes. and the call for the question. Madam Clerk. So the motion is to receive copies of Miss Fields <laughs> illegal. I don't know. No. Um, we didn't say nothing about illegal. We yeah. said we wanted communic. We want her communications forwarded to the clerk so the clerk can publish them under other city official communications on this agenda. That's what the motion is. Just general. Specific, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? No. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? No. Mr. Griggs? No. Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. The vote is three yes. Madam Chair? Five no. Councilman Mays? Madam Chair, how can her communications get around being other city officials. 
In fact, you can get around it. In fact, the vote that they already did that deals with wider communications going out, she must be on there. Now, I'm here to tell you this is a very hypocritical bunch if the majority going to vote to put wider communications from the mayor and it say the mayor and other city officials, and here y'all going to vote, the bunch that's trying to control the presidency. See, I might well start early in September. There's a lobbying effort for who will be the next president. I won't be putting that group in. Miss Fields, Worthen, Griggs, vote in a group. Miss Galloway, I don't know what you and Santino is doing or talking to, but I want on the next governmental ops agenda the discussion of the politics of this vote for president. Because a little birdie done told me who, what four or five is running together and communicating this early <laughs> in order to try to pass four or five votes. It ain't that far-fetched, Miss um, Worthy. I'm laughing. I laugh out loud. <laughs> I don't mind winning and losing oh. votes, but it won't be nothing caught off off guard. We will discuss if it's okay. I want on governmental operations the discussion of the next leadership of this council. Because I know for a fact folks is already a jockeying for president. And they counting on fields, Worthen Griggs to be a block. And then they gonna try to rely on Guerra and the and, and I'm wondering is the present chair jockeying for president. So all of this is relevant on how these votes line up. You know, maybe Mr. Guerra wanna roll that way. Maybe he wanna be vice. Oh, maybe he wanna be fine. So I want this discussion openly. I don't like violations of the Open Meetings Act. I don't like people coming to me because people talking. I don't talk behind the scenes. I talk in an open meeting, when it gets to be two or more, I see folks standing around smoking together on breaks. It would behoove me that they ain't discussing city business. I don't know, they might not. But this discussion, unlike other discussions, Mr. Garrett, you don't object to that being a discussion item on your agenda, the leadership of this council moving forward. Mr. Pastor Moore, I mean, Pastor Gilbert, that's how my vision is. I ain't obtuse <laughs> when it comes to knowing the politics of a four or five vote council. I'm really quick about it. And win, lose, or draw, I'm going to put it out there because I see something here. And we might as well get to the bottom of it publicly because I see something here. This official communication from other city officials, Ms. Um, Wheeler and Ms. Brown, I'm gonna be brazen a stink if when it show up, it don't show up with Ms. Fields' communication. Now, if she want everybody else's, she got a duty to forward hers too. And then I wanna see it on here. I look at agendas. I don't read all them emails. So let's, let's see what happened now. If y'all tell me when that motion was passed, I'll do a motion to suspend the rules, which it might not pass today, not for what I see here, and then come back and reconsider that. That's really a little much. I can see if you want something specific, but for 30 years, this is a little much, even if we was up to capacity, Pastor Gilbert. Who voting for this? Is it a group? Is it a group? If the majority of the council done stooped to this low, listening to that mess, then put it on your agenda. Let's discuss the leadership no. in these votes, because the handwriting seemed to be on the wall. And I'm fitting to call attention to it for September, October leading into November. That's what I see, Mr. Garrett. It might be a fantasy in my mind, but I think it's real.
because I'm watching this vote counting who rolling with who. Thank you. Mr. Gear. Ridiculous. I'd, like I'd like to make a motion to approve the master resolution. There's a motion to approve the master resolution. Is there a second? Madam Sorry. Chair. Councilman Mays. I would support that motion to approve it's the been master moved resolution. moved and seconded. Is there any separations and or discussions? Yes. Councilwoman Fields. I would like to separate number uh, point of order. Councilman Mays, what's your point of order? Did we do additional communications and appointments? Yes, we did. I don't know if we did. We didn't. Even though I supported his we motion, the I, young guy. I said it. I said it, but we, you. Councilman Mays, yeah, he jumped. Well, Councilman Fields, and then so. Can I continue? No additional communications. Thank you. Is no appointments. At no this appointments. Time. Thank you. So we are on the master resolution, Ms. Fields. I'd like to separate 180428 and 180431. Okay, 28. And, oh, okay. Any other separations? Mr. Griggs. Did you ask for questions on any of these resolutions? Also? I asked first, was there any, yep, it's any discussions and or separations. Okay. So right now there's a separation on 180428 and 180431. So, Mr. Griggs. Is postponed, yep. So, as of now, the master resolution includes 180398.1, 180425, 180426, 180427, 180429, and 180430. Madam so, President, Mr. I would like to discuss 180425. So, no so would you like it separated, Mr. Griggs? It's been separated. It's either point discuss or separate it hasn't been separated. Point, separate. point of information. What's your point of information? I thought 180425 was separated no. by Ms. Field. It hasn't. She, it has. she separated 180428 and 180431, last two okay. resolutions on the agenda. So, Mr. Four. Griggs, would you like to separate that? Yeah, on uh, 180425, I don't see it mentioned in here about half replacement. Wait a minute, we just separated. Uh -uh. He could discuss. I order. just want to make he sure that we know. He, he, I'm going to give it to him. I want to make sure that you are separating it. He, did, he said he would. Right, but usually, usually we separate and then we vote on the master, and then we go back to separations and have discussions. That's correct. So if you want to set a new precedent, that's what it sounds, I'm trying to chair, but you're saying point something, of order. Is it, what is your point of order? Are you saying it's improper to discuss something on the master resolution without separating it? You're not saying that, are you? N no, uh, but what I, generally it is what we do, Councilman Mays, we separate it. And so, uh, Davina, tell me, because I'm not trying to pretend like no. I know I can only go by what we have set and do as a council, and so you are the record Madam keeper. Chair. I just, Councilman Mays. I don't care Councilman what. Councilman Mays, Mr. Griggs has the floor. I you had a point I of said a point of order. Right, and so now we're getting the so, answer so to your what's point your, of order. So what's your ruling? I don't think Davina going to decide this for me. No, she's not, but she's going to give me some information and so that I can And then you going to decide whether Absolutely. he can discuss it without separating it. Okay, I didn't give you the information. Thank it you. can be done. That's fine. Thank you. Davina. Thank you. Still can't be So if if Mr. Griggs, you are more than welcome. If you want to exhaust your five minutes right now, you absolutely can. So what is your pleasure, sir? I never use five minutes. No problem, the Davina. Uh -huh. No, I'm going to on one eight zero four two five. There's so, no mention of half inch water meters. Is talking about five eighths and one inch. I think most of our residential water meters are half inch. Point of information. One, What's your I'm, point of it, Mr. Griggs? Wants did to did he separate it? Mr. Griggs, you don't have to separate it if you want to discuss if he it right now. It. Mr. Um, Bensick is here, so you, you do. You is just it want separated? To I'm trying, Councilman Mays. Let me let me get your question answered, Mr. Griggs. Answer is simple. You, oh God. 
Mr. If you Griggs, separated it at my Mays, point of order, is let's keep you moving. A warning. Anything I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna appeal the appeal ruling of the chair. Of the chair. You can't give me a warning appeal. for saying point of order. What's the warning? Councilman I'm Mays. appealing your ruling. Thank you. There's an appeal of the ruling of the chair on the floor. Is there any second? There's an appeal of the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? I support that. That motion has been supported. So, Madam Chair, Councilman Mays, I'm going to say why I said you have consistently asked the question and I told you that I am trying to get the answer. And instead of letting me get the answer, you continue to be disruptive and continue to interrupt me. And so that is why I said I'm trying to get the answer. You decided that you wanted to appeal, even though for the record, for my colleagues, I did not rule him out of order. I gave him a warning and said that if he continues. So just for the record, that's what I did. I didn't do anything inappropriate. Councilman Mays refuses to let me ask Mr. Griggs for clarity. But now you have the floor. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Madam Tom Chair, Divina my Divina. argument is this. I got the right to say point of order, point of information. It's a privileged motion, and it don't dictate that you should be warning me. If I say point of order, that ain't out of order. You can't warn me or use up a warning on me for a point of order, a point of information, just because you don't want me to ask it. It is proper for me to say point of order. If it's separated, then we'll discuss it in separation. So the quick answer on the point of information, if he's separated at my point of order, let's vote on the master. He can discuss that later. I don't need Rob Benzik up here and it's been separated. Now, if it ain't separated, then let's talk to Rob Benzik. So don't warn me when I say point of order. Hear what my point of order is. So I'm glad Ms. Winfrey Carter um, supported my appeal because I don't need a warning on me because after warning comes removal. So it ain't no cavalier, I didn't rule him out of order. When you warned me, you did rule me out of order. And so I'm not agreeing with that. I don't care if you, Griggs, Eva, Kate Fields vote in favor of you warning me, I still don't think you're gonna win. I still don't think your warning gonna hold up. And so I'm learning something in this meeting that you chaired, because I gave y'all great leniency, you and Ms. Fields, in finance. Didn't invoke the five-minute rule. Couldn't y'all talk more than two times. I'm just looking at how folks act when they sit in the chair. And I'll be doggone if I'm going to let you warn me on TV and then come back and say I didn't rule him out of order. In fact, the warning is a way of ruling folk out of order. If he done separated it, which I know he had, then he can wait till we vote on the master and call him up. If he separated it, that's what I understood. So my point of order was in order on this discussion and calling Rob up prematurely. And so I do appeal you, and I will be voting no on your ruling. You rude me out all the time while I'm warning you. Don't play me like a chump in no, on no TV warning me for a point of order. My point of order should have been well taken. He done separated it. That's enough on that until he get to the separation. So I'll be voting. I think it'll be proper to vote no on this appeal or is the appeal do I want to vote yes. The appeal is that I wasn't out of order. So if I vote yes, that means I'm voting I wasn't out of order. If I vote no, we can clear that up before the vote. Because until you withdraw your warning, I ain't withdrawing my motion in the appeal. Yeah, you warned me. That means you was being big shot. You out of order. I warned you. Shut up. That's what you said. Ms. Field. I believe that the appeal to the chair is incorrect. You did give Mr. Mays a warning, but I believe you gave him a warning um, in the correct way because Mr. Mays keeps calling points of order which are not points of order. Now, I'm glad we're going to have our parliamentarian session, at least the first one soon, because I see Mr. Mays, and not only Mr. Mays, others as well, but they use point of order incorrectly. They use point of order when they just don't like what you're saying and want to interrupt you. 
a point of order is a notice to the chair that there has been a breach of the rules, either council rules or Robert's rules. And I would hope in the future that chairs insist that the person who calls a point of order has to cite what rule has been breached, what rule has been broken. And I notice that this is not happening. A point of order is not just, I don't like what you're saying, so I'm going to interrupt you. Okay? It has to be, a point of order is a breach of the rules. So when you gave Mr. Mays a warning, I took it to mean you are incorrectly using point of order and you are abusing point of order in order to interrupt and to gain the floor which I believe that's exactly what he was doing. So I will not be supporting his appeal. Any further discussion? I just want to say for the record, when I said to Mr. Mays that um, he was, I was warning him, we had already gotten past his point of order. And so he kept saying, did he separate it, did he separate it? And I said, I'm getting ready to see if he's separating. Did he separate it? It wasn't a point of order. Did he separate it? Point of order. Did he separate it? And so I don't want this council to, to be misled that I ignored his point of order because usually if you think about Councilman Mays, if I ignored his point of order, he would be quick to say, Councilwoman Galloway, a point of order is a privileged motion. And he did not say that because he had already gotten past that. And so, if there's no Madam Chair, it is. Madam Chair, you just argued your case twice. The fact of the matter is, I said I said two privileged motions. I said a point of information first, dealing with the separation. Then I came back with a point of order. And I did the point of order when Mr. Benzik was coming up. If it's separated, you don't need no further discussion from Mr. Griggs. He might not know it, and you might not neither. Ms. Fields talking about a rule. That's the rule I'm pointing of order. If it's a separation. Point of information. Councilman Mays, didn't you say that it was proper for him to separate and or not separate and still discuss? Yeah. Oh, OK, thank you. Yeah, okay, but that was my point of order. Just like your point of information, I answered you quick. Yeah, I said that and still say it. But at the same time, I still say point of order. Why have you called and robbed Benzik up and no, letting him discuss something that's been separated? Point but of information. Said, there you go. I don't think you're abusing it. I'm just going to Point of information. Point Councilman Mays, are you now saying that you are appealing my ruling because I called up Mr. Benzik? Ms. Galloway, what I appealed is you giving me a warning when I'm saying point of order and saying I'm out of order because I'm saying point of order and telling me I'm out of order and Ms. Fields and you think I'm abusing it. That's what I'm appealing. When I say point of order, the first point was a point of information. What was separated? And I thought it had already been separated. Y'all say, no, it hadn't. Y'all said he separated it. Once I got that information, then when you proceeded with discussion, I did a point of order to say if he separated it, we'll get to that later. And that was my point of order. Griggs don't need to keep talking until after we vote on the master resolution and get to his separation. Now, if all of this happened in a nanosecond and people are obtuse as to what I'm trying to say, then they'll vote accordingly. I'm not going to nitpick. I appreciate the second to appeal, Ms. Winfrey Carter, because this was clear. You had a separation. She can allow Griggs to keep talking on a separation, and then maybe he'll put it back in and withdraw his separation. So you can discuss it, but my point of order was if he separated it, we don't need to deal with it right now. And you do that by saying point of order, and you cut him off from talking, and you cut you off from calling Rob up just because you want it to, because you're the chair. You wait to the separation. So in light of what Ms. Fields is saying, but you warned me, and you were steady calling Mr. 
Ben Zakar. He was back there. That's why he up here. You called him up. So you can say what you want to, and I know my time is up, but at the same time, don't mischaracterize my appeal. And Mr. I'll Guerra. be voting in favor of my appeal. Mr. Yeah. I don't appreciate it. I just want to one. say that uh, for everybody watching, we would have been done by now, in my opinion. We haven't got to the resolutions yet. Uh, we have talked more about what we would have done and what we should have done than what we are going to actually do. Um, so if I don't, can we vote, please, on this and move on? Are you doing a call to the question? Nope. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Gregg. Madam President, I. I never got to ask my question. No, Mr. It, Griggs, there's an appeal of the ruling of the chair <laughs> on the floor. Do you have any discussions about that? No. Okay. So, hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk. This is on the appeal of the ruling of the chair. Is that what you're doing, or is it on the master resolution? No, it's the appeal of the ruling of the chair. Okay, Mr. Guerra. No. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? No. Mr. Griggs? Mr. Griggs. Mr. Griggs. Man, you gotta keep going. He ain't in his chair. Point order. Keep moving. Just skip him. Uh, Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Point no. of order. Point of Some order. Of the ruling of the chair. Point of order. Point of order. Mr. Mays? Point. Can you do a point of order in the middle of the road? Mr. Call? Mays? No. Point of order. Mr. Mays? I was calling for your vote. Yeah, no. Mr. Mays? Mr. Mays? Point of order. Once the vote starts, yeah. It is, it's proper if the vote has not already started. It's going to be proper that we ain't going to backtrack and vote out of order. We're in a rotation. After Worthing come Mays all day long, and re and votes ain't gonna be rigged. It ain't gonna happen like that in my watch. So I wouldn't care if a point of order is out of order. That's way out of order. She does the same thing when you're standing up. So. Well, you can say what you want okay. to about me, Ms. Galloway. Right now, I'm asking you to rule on my point of order, and if you don't rule, your point out of order is out of order. I'm not recognizing it. Say what? Uh, your, your point of order So you order ruling is, that my it's point not proper. is improper? So, that's right. I appeal. Can you appeal in the middle of a vote? Yeah, none of this is proper. So, Ms. Ms. Um, you want to be a big time the president. Okay, Mr. You jockeying. Point of order, I'm appealing the ruling of the chair as it relates to my point about circling I'm back to Mr. To Griggs. Vote. I'm appealing out of the appeal. Your job is to Mr. say Davis. there's a second. So y'all gonna, you and I Nez yes. gonna dog a councilman out? Is that what this thing went down to? I appeal the ruling of a chair, it's a privileged motion. You have to be able nobody, to be no, recognized not, to appeal, and well, you're not. I don't so, have to be acknowledged to say point of order. Councilman May. You wrong, Thank I you. said point of order. Ain't nobody gonna be skipping Thank back, you. and so, you, you might well Mr. wait for Mr. Winfrey to get in his chair. Okay. Mr. You ain't going to go back, call Ms. Worthen, and then go back to Mr. Griggs. I come after Ms. Worthen. It's a rotation. He, was, he missed the According vote. to the rules, debate ceases immediately. Thank you. Uh, yeah, clerk. Point of order. On Mr. Davis. Point of order. He said yes. Okay. Oh, y'all going to dog out like that? We not. Okay. If you gonna Matt, dog out like that vote. and y'all gonna disrespect my doggone council seat, y'all got another thing coming. Whenever I say point of order, I wouldn't care what's happening. Everything stops. Madam Clerk, and whenever the clerk Councilman and you Mays, agree to go back to Mr. You're Greg, out of order now. I'm gonna stay out of order okay. on this one because y'all well, disrespecting my seat. Well, then I'm gonna have to seat. ask You disrespecting my seat. Cast. You're not gonna skip over You're this. out of order. I'm gonna stay out of order. I'm okay. appealing your ruling of the chair. Officer Metcalf, no. I, I don't have ruling. to recognize that because when I ruled you out of order, you have to I immediately. You have to it's, immediately it's appeal. appeal. No way. Appeal. And I want to see no. if it's second. Yeah. Your job is to ask if it's the nope. second. You That's your job. No. And if you don't know it, I'll tell you. I do know. 
And I know it because Councilman I'm Winfrey. I'm appealing the ruling of the chair. Your job is to see no. if it's a second. That's no. your job, Mr. Madam want to be president, and you're making a farce out of yourself. I'm not. And letting the clerk and everybody else. Now, I'm here to tell Officer you. Officer Metcalf, I have ruled Councilman Mays I'm out of order. I'm appealing the ruling, and you got to see if it's a you, second. No, I don't. I don't have you to do it on the, the spot uh, of a dime. I don't appeal to that. Yes, you second, do. I'm you have to immediately stop arguing. Second. You I have to immediately second. stop arguing and do an appeal, and you didn't. I'll you lost it your it's opportunity. Been seconded. By Mr. Davis, you ain't hearing it because you too busy arguing. You're going to look like a he fool. immediately stop arguing and say, I appeal your rule. He didn't. I had to say, it's I appeal then been second. You need to acknowledge the that. second. And so, yeah, read that. Hey, so uh, Mr. Arguing. Metcalf, if she don't acknowledge the second and deal with this appeal, get her out the seat. That it's put wrong. me in the seat as finance chair. Wrong. You, you wrong. It's been moved. It's been moved and second no. the appeal, and you don't want to acknowledge. Yeah, we gonna it look, Councilman you. Mays, but and you, 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 you messed yourself up. You vote. know the rules. My vote is sacred. Your vote is, but you didn't respect uh, your vote tonight. When I say you are out of order, you are supposed to immediately cease arguing and say, I appeal your decision. You did not. You continued to argue, and I said, I appeal you out of order again. I said it three times before you said, you I appeal the decision. Galloway. No, I'm not. And second it. Baby, I'm willing to take this one Baby. all the way because I asked Councilman Winfrey Baby. about it. You are wrong, and you made it up on tonight. It's been oh, seconded, yeah. baby. Let's, let's pull it up. No way. It's you, an appeal. You messed up on that. Seconded. You're so used to arguing that we've given you chances to did argue, even though you don't do it. You hear the hey. second man. No, uh uh. You didn't hear it? No. Oh, get yeah, that, we are going to move on. Because I'm there. asking baby. that he would be removed. Thank you. Well. I'm going to so be laughing when a, this uh, appeal, did good. you second it, Maurice? Second. And when I'm removed, you out of order, get Council ready, Mays. Angela, because I'm going to vote for another. Okay, no. It's been moved and seconded. Is there 000? any discussion? Councilman Mays, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? What are you talking about? You now all of a sudden decision. you didn't quit all that high? Oh, because yes. you're mocking. We're going to go over the so rules, but we are second? going to get to business. What? You Point of order. Davis where are we at? Did. Point of information. Councilman where Davis are we supported at? your appeal. So here Been we are. Told you that and here you we are. Happen. Thank you. And so let me tell you guys what has happened. Because I am tired of Councilman Mays. He is a mockery. And I'm going to tell you what our rules say. When you, when you are ruled out of order, you are to cease arguing, and you have to immediately say, I appealed the decision of the chair. He did not. So I had to say, you are out of order again. Once he does that, once I say that and he tries to appeal it again, he loses his right to appeal the decision of the chair. And I'm going to tell you why I know this, because Councilman Winfrey served on the Rules Committee. And I said to Councilman Winfrey, how come you didn't support? There was an opportunity that Councilman Mays appealed the decision of the chair. And I said, why didn't you support him? He said, because he continued to argue and he didn't immediately say, I appealed the decision of the rule of the chair. He lost his opportunity. And so now I ruled him out of order because he continued to argue instead of appealing my decision right away. I had to say it three times before he decided he was going to stop talking and arguing and complaining to say that he appealed the decision of the chair. But it is in the hands of this council. I'm good one way or the other. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. i like to say pre-argument, when Mr. Mays made the statement of point of order, at that time Mr. Griggs was speaking to Mr. Benzik over by the window. And at that time, he should have been in his seat to make his vote, but he missed his vote. And he kept stating, again, point of order, point of order, be preceding the argument. Now, Councilman Mays is absolutely correct. After Ms. Worthen voted, it should have been in rotation. He missed his vote, and he was absolutely correct, even though whether he kept responding or not, because there was no response to Mr. Mays's complaint yes, of Mr. Griggs not being in this chair, and I'm done. Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Fields. 
I'd like to say that the two items that I separated on the uh, master resolution, there's an $8 million issue and there's an $80 million issue. And I don't know why Mr. Mays is still sitting there uh, and why um, the officer Metcalf is standing there when our chair clearly told uh, officer Metcalf to remove Mr. Mays. But I want to say I'm not going to sit here and waste my time even though they're very important issues. And I have some important things to say about those issues that are pertinent to the residents and to the city because this behavior sucks the air out of the room and takes away all the time we have to attend to real issues, real issues that affect the citizens. So I'm leaving. This is ridiculous. Mr. Mays has been running the show down here incorrectly, illegally for too long. He needs to be removed and we are, can't get any business conducted until he is removed. Yeah, I really take offense to Ms. Fields saying that I'm illegal. I'm Those are big words, but I just listen to folks talk. As far as my vote, and then the rotation based up our rules, when Miss Worthen voted, come to me. It don't go back to Griggs or hop back to Miss Winfrey Carter. You can't do it. And so when I'm fighting for my vote and what's right, it's going to be a fight. It doesn't take a genius or a rocket science to know our rules. If Mr. Griggs and Miss Fields and others want to leave and walk out, they do it all the time. If he don't want to be in his seat, just like I wasn't in my seat one week, the, the, the meetings go on. But I'm not going to allow for Miss um, Fields, Miss Galloway, or Miss Brown to violate something doing with voting. Voting. This is a rotation vote. Mr. Davis is right. Stevie Wonder can see it. Miss Galloway can say all she wants, but you pull back the record and I'm going point of order, point of order. She's steady arguing and loud and ain't going to acknowledge it. She didn't say, what's your point? She didn't say, is there a second to the appeal? You have to argue with her about every little movement on a privileged motion. Every little movement on a privileged motion. It don't take a rocket science to see Mr. Griggs over there talking and people steady trying to get him to vote. He ain't in his seat. The rules say when you ain't in your seat, keep moving. And then the circle back to him is outrageous. It's outrageous. You don't circle back when you're trying to get four and five votes. That's outrageous and it's out of order. And here folks talking about they won't be satisfied till I get put out of my seat. That sounds like what Scott and Carrie and Jackie and them were saying. I know Miss Fields think like that, and I know Miss Galloway won't they support. She won't they support. I don't be bowing down for no corrupt, ignorant, bad report. Now anybody who can call me illegal, I'm gonna call them corrupt, ignorant. Um, nasty. You, you got a nasty lady up there, Miss Fields. Just nasty. Gonna call me illegal. And now they steady having sidebars. Miss Miss Galloway, you looking bad. You looking bad. And on this one, for those who know our rules, whoever instructed Miss Brown. Or unless you did, Ms. Brown, to circle back on Mr. Griggs after Worthing and voted and we got rules of rotation. I dare anybody up here to sit and tell me we don't rotate the vote. We don't backtrack on no votes. And a vote is sacred. People died for the right to vote. Ms. Galloway. And I'd be damned if I'm going to let people beat me out of my seat and my vote because Ms. Galloway don't want to acknowledge an uh, appeal to the ruling of the chair. It took damn near minutes before she even asked, let alone knew that Mr. Davis had appealed 
second in the appeal. Now, I've been a chairperson, and I done asked Mr. Metcalf to remove her um, fields and words, and then he did the same thing. And the conversation he had said it's got to do with the vote after the appeal. Ain't that what you told me? So he wise enough to know when it's an appeal. They didn't want the appeal. They didn't want the appeal. She wanted to strong arm my removal, nasty, strong arm. They're like under the emergency manager. That's what she wanted to do, and it didn't go down. Because I know what he had told me. Councilman Major, appeal, time is up. Ms. Galloway, yes, I will we wrap up. up. Thank I you, will sir. shut up. Thank you, you sir. You sure had a lot to say. Thank you, sir. You sure had a lot to say. Don't talk thank me now. Because it wouldn't be out of hand if you just be what you're supposed to be. Thank you, sir. And quit trying to talk about me. You can't make your reputation off of me. Make your own. I was born and raised in Flint. My daddy was a pastor. You from California. Make your own reputation. Miss Fields, Miss Fields, I'm not talking to you. And so don't talk to me. Because if you want to start talking to me, Miss Fields, when I got the flow, every time you talk, you'll get my attention. I sat and listened to that mess you talk about calling people names, acting illegally. You just say it out plain like it's true. And I'm tired of you characterizing me and telling me who I am and what I'm doing. It's just, it's just too much. And Ms. Galloway, you ain't checking it. You letting her call us racist, illegal, we acting illegal. People like they scared, they ain't scared, this a game. And you rolling with them. These some folks playing a game. Eva think it's funny. Kate doing it and you buying into it. Here you done sat and ignored an appeal, ignored a second, and then after the hoopla, okay, let's point go. Point of order, Madam Chair, he has far What's surpassed your point of his that? time. Right. Sure um, have. I Councilman sure have passed it. You want to tell me to wrap yeah. up? That's Ma the right Councilman, thing. Councilman, you already said that you would wrap up three minutes ago. I didn't say I'd wrap yes, up three did. minutes ago. You think you heard that. Oh, goodness. You Councilman, ain't heard me say the wrap Hayes. up word once. If you want me to wrap up, I will. But I ain't said nothing about wrap up. Right, he is. And Thank so you. whenever you yeah. hear stuff in that chair that ain't for real, you tend to think it's for real. Thank you, Councilman Guerra. Don't thank me. Just say wrap up. You being rude. No, you I'll said that you the question. I call for the yeah, question. I call for the question. I already called. I already recognized oh, Mr. Guerra. How Mr. you going to take the flow from me? Point Council of order. Days, your time was up. Point of order. Oh, goodness. What is your point of order? You telling Council me days, you done took the flow as I call for the question. I thought your you time said was wrap up. up. No. I'm you said that you would wrap up three minutes ago. And when ago. I called for the question, you didn't want me to wrap up. I can call for the question Mays, I have already recognized up. Councilman Guerra. You just want to hear from Councilman him. Guerra. I said call for the question. You're, you're so you saying you ain't going to allow that, and I still had the flow? There's a call for the question. Yeah, so what you doing? Calling but on him? You weren't recognized. I had already oh. recognized Mr. Gary. Mr. Gary, what joke, is? Okay. Do I have the floor? We'll see. Have the floor. You I do have the floor, sir. You what? know, I, I in the last, I'd say, 10, 15 minutes, it's, it's what I've seen negatives from several council members on here. And uh, I get the reason why you said that point of order because Mr. Griggs wasn't in the seat, but I was also under the impression that the votes aren't finalized until they're called back um, by the clerk. So, so that's why I also thought that was that way. Um, so that, that's a confusing thing that I would like to check. And then, uh, is that an answer to that? There, do you, would you like to um, read what it says? Right. 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 But Robert's rules. Point of information. What's your point of information? So that means I can get out of my seat, see what other people can do, and then hop back in my seat and come back to me. That ain't the do you spirit think that of it. Is that the spirit of our rotation? Uh, no. That ain't the right. Spirit of 
Yeah, yeah. right. But, but that's right. Everybody gets an opportunity. Yeah. But we've done that with Mr. Mays a couple of times. Well, yes, we have done that with Mr. Mays a couple of times when he's been even walking down the aisle to his seat. Point of information. Point of information. If Ms. Brown wanna What's use your me to What's your point if of she wanna use me to make her argument, show me the specific date and agenda. I'll make I that referral and I request. Don't, don't, don't use me no no argument. Because I, I know that ain't problem. too much Thank happening. You. Ain't nobody circled back on Thank me in you, four sir. years. Do I have the floor still? No, yes. Uh, so you do have the floor. So Sorry. what I would also for four years and like I never Councilman Mays, you do not have the floor. Mr. Garrett. The rule that you're referencing that Mr. Winfrey told you on the rules committee before this vote comes up i would like if you could restate that if angela could say that for the record just so they know you can change your vote before the vote come up that's what it said you can change no 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 i wasn't saying that Madam councilman Madam. he asked me to answer a question for him councilman mays had done an appeal for the decision of the chair and councilman winfrey who sat next to me when he was a six board council person when he wasn't the president. Point of order. What is your point of order? This is the time where people make their arguments. Ms. Galloway, no. you started Councilman out. Mays, he now asked for he clarity. Got the flow. What is these arguments? Is it going to continue Councilman Mays, you are, I am answering uh, the question. What is, just listen well, I to said, it. why didn't point you? Order. No, no, you Which are abusing no your point of order. Of order. It's a yes. What is, what is my your point? point of order? This ain't the time. What is your point of order? This ain't the time. What I'm is your point you, of order? You listen, listen. Yo, you arguing the case. I'm not. He got the flow. He asked me you a question. Then we gonna all chime in on the answer because your answer is different from mine. Let learn how to chair me. You need to learn how to be diplomatic. Point of just, order. What is your point of order? You ain't Mr. gonna Gara, get two or three you arguments. Before. You gonna get one okay. for five minutes or two. Question. That's okay. You abusing we'll, we'll the chair. My question to legal. Thank you. Well, Miss 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 Wheeler, if you will answer, when Councilman Mays made his um, point, I don't know if it was a point of order first, and and it was discussed that once the roll call had been done, it ceases all conversation, and that privileged motion is not done during a roll call. Would you just please? Point of information. What's your point of information? Point of information. According to Council Rule 9.3, the voting on all roll calls shall be rotated so that the council person representing the first ward shall cast the first vote on the first roll call of any meeting. The council person from the second ward shall count, cast a vote on the second roll call of any meeting, and so on throughout the meeting, so that the first vote on the roll call shall be solicited from the seceding council person. <clears throat> Following the first vote of any roll call, the remaining council person shall be called in consecutive order until all nine council persons have been afforded an opportunity to vote on any question. That's the end. We know that. Can, um, Madam, Madam Attorney, President. and before you go, I would appeal to Ms. Fields and Ms. Worthing. Ms. Begum. Fields and Ms. Worthing. Begum. Ms. Fields and Ms. Worthing, I would appeal to you guys the agenda items. Point of order. Council, what's your point of order? We're in the middle of discussion on an appeal, not nothing to do with them. Stick here. We got a quorum. The only We're sad the thing about it is, Councilman Mays, Madam your behavior Sarah, you is causing to get your council votes. people. I could meeting. care less about yes, winning this vote. We got an eight million dollar resolution and an eighty million dollar bond on the. Let your cronies no, go. Just go. Let your cronies Madam, go. Madam President. How about I withdraw, ruling you out of order? I just wanted to stop. I stop. I stop. I could care if you stay here all night. I am sad for what you do to this council. Hey, I just want to get you got a speech or you withdrawing ruling out of order. If you withdrawing ruling out of order, don't get no speech. Pass. Done. Okay. What you doing? So where are we at? I'm going to tell you where we at. We are on an appeal. No. You, I, I, I withdrew that. I withdrew ruling okay, you out of order. Okay, now see what we do. It ain't just up oh, to you to withdraw. You'll no. see what we what do. What time is up, Mr. Um, Gary? You have the 
floor. Oh, you might want to pick Thank you, Mr. Gary. Go ahead. I could care less. It goes back and win. Thank you. If, if, if that's all over, then I think it was Mr. Brink. Well, no, it's not. He hasn't withdrew, so we are still on the appeal. So what would you like to say? Because you are the last comment, unless some of my other colleagues... I, I think I still have the floor. No, no, uh -huh. we, we've way past that. I know. Well, okay, then you let me... You see what I mean? No, no, okay, no, Mr. Right, Greg, wait a minute. Mr. Mr. Guerra has the floor. Let me see. Mr. Right. Guerra... Just cause she was jealous. It's funny that Mr. Mays wants to um, get some I allegiance from Mr. Guerra. I, I don't know, know Mr. Guerra. Go ahead. Miss, Miss, um, There's no answer. Ms. Why? Wheeler, please um, ask, speak, please. Question. So, so this, okay, so my, under, my understanding is that we're here because you ruled for Councilman Mays to be removed due that to the fact that correct. he kept talking after you ruled him out of order correct so, so he appealed he was out of order he appealed being out of order and then uh late later <laughs> and you're saying that he it was too late to appeal that because he's already okay, been moved because he kept arguing i want to know if that's an actual rule it ain't the rule she's talking about it and if so that where's the appeal of the decision of chair do you have can i um see that yeah can i see your um roberts you rule you got it Does Did Councilman Garrett still have the floor? Can I see your appeal of the decision? Santino, you still got the floor? I played for an answer. Huh? You, you for an answer. What was your, what was your, what was your question? He's so supposed to cease immediately. Uh, just just keep going. Let's just that keep going. Because she does not. It's got to be immediate. Come on, man. Oh, if we're ceasing immediately, that's rule 25. Um, point five. So, how, so can you can you read that? Oh, that's on the point of order. Well, actually, any two any two members have the right to appeal the presiding officer's decision on a point of order. Um, actually, yeah, this I don't think we've used this before. It says this requires one member making or taking the appeal and another seconding and supporting it. Se lack of support means the motion fails. If the motion is supported, the council body votes to decide the question. Mm -hmm. So that's on uh, appealing yeah. the point of order. Right. Now, then you have, you also talked about a point of order, um, of course, not being ignored. And it says in 25.4, a point of order presiding officer. Correct. No agreement out of order or disagree um, denied given. Um, all debate or talking shall cease immediately when a point of order is raised in order for the presiding officer to rule. Failure to cease talking shall result in disciplinary action. Violators shall be removed from the meeting. Cease talking immediately. What is immediately? 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, yeah, but two he didn't. seconds. Yeah. He didn't, so his his appeal is um, still on the floor. Madam Chair. So did did you did you cease immediately? That's all it is the so just for the record. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair. Oh wait, you, wait, no, 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 Councilman Griggs, I'm so sorry. You have the floor. Okay. Now Councilman Griggs, it's important that you know that we are in discussion on the appeal of the chair. All right. So did you want to wait then? Okay. I guess I gotta wait. I'd rather just say what I'm gonna say and be done. <laughs> I let, me, let me tell you, I, uh, Mr. Benzik, I asked this well, question. Well, wait, 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 no, Councilman Green. And he and I decided we could get it done a lot quicker over here. Okay. And we got it done in 10 seconds. Okay. I want to withdraw my question from there. I don't want to separate 180. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna get to that. That's Thank good. you. Thank you. So, Councilman Mays. Yeah. Mr. Miss Miss Galloway, you ought to be ashamed of yourself trying to convince Mr. Guerra and anybody else that an appeal have to be immediate. Is that within three seconds, ten seconds, or twenty seconds, or thirty seconds? What you should concentrate on when there's a, a privileged motion, you recognize it immediately. That's the immediate. Not that it can't be recognized. The second immediate is when there's an appeal or the ruling of the chair. Immediately, you should ask Mr. Davis or anybody else, is there a second? 
That's the immediate. As far as immediate when you appeal a ruling, whether you do it within five seconds, <sighs> 10 seconds, whether you doing your job right and ain't recognizing the privileged motions, don't then when we got to argue about you on a point of order, say we didn't move immediately. We were too busy arguing about you and what you wasn't doing immediately. So all of these rules that y'all pulling out, trying your best to make the facts change. The facts is that Ms. Worthing had voted and it go consecutively next to me. It don't jump back to Griggs. We didn't suspend the rules. And when I seen such a thing happening, because I'm counting votes, I did a point of order. And then you question whether you could do a point of order in the middle of a vote. A vote is sacred. Hell yeah, I can do a point of order in the middle of votes if I can't do it. No time I'm going to do a privileged motion because I'm not going to sit in a public arena and let my vote and this institution be discredited like what I thought I seen. I ain't got to baby Mr. Griggs because he don't want to sit in his seat. Y'all don't baby me. Well, you can buck your eyes, Ms. Galloway. You ain't babied me. And I ain't asked to be babied. I'm 59 years old. So you can buck your eyes, Ms. Galloway, but the way you chaired this meeting is what caused the problem. Ain't no way around it. Ain't no way around it. And I'm here to tell you, the council appoints the clerk. The clerk works for the council. I don't have to rely on Ms. Brown to say she can go backwards. This council and five votes gonna dictate that rule. So I don't have to ask Mr. Pastor Gilbert what the council do. Five votes gonna dictate it. And I'm gonna know the five votes. I'm gonna watch the Kate Fields. I'm gonna watch the Griggs. I'm gonna watch you. And I'm gonna watch the Mr. Garris and the Worthings. I don't care who leaves this council. Hell, I want them to stay gone. I want to replace them. The only way you can get five votes is if you team up with that foolishness, you and Gara. Well, you got to call for it immediately. What you got to do is recognize a point of order immediately. What you got to do is ask, is there a second immediately? That's what didn't happen immediately. You can laugh, Ms. Galloway, but you got my attention. If you think you can out sit out here and warn me, call sergeants and lieutenants and ignore an appeal from a colleague, you got another thing coming. And like I say, he who laughs, laughs, laughs best. You think that you can get somebody with your voice to remove me from my seat. If that was the case, I would have removed you, Kate Fields, and Eva in committee meeting the other week, but Mr. Metcalf say the appeal have to play out. Now you done withdrew ruling me out of order. So we'll withdraw the appeal, Mr. Davis, and move on. The votes ain't here. She ain't gonna vote in favor against herself. Garrett and show how he operate. So the vote would probably and end And Councilman up Major, your time is so up. Are you withdrawing? Madam Chair, if you said withdraw it and I said just now I withdraw it, don't tell me my time is up because now all appeals has been withdrawn. What I want to know is how the vote going to roll. Because y'all tried to pot bypass me. Did you withdraw? I never voted yet. Y'all went from Worthing back to Griggs, past me to Davis, because I was saying I appeal. Okay, Councilman. Now, I know your what time is happened up. and not Your happen. time is up. Thank you. And so, um. Announce the vote. What since vote? it's up. What's the vote? What was the vote? What vote? Call the, call, call the vote, because I didn't vote. Didn't abstain, didn't vote. Yes, no, call the vote, Madam Chair. Point of information, what was the vote? The, first of all, the let's just say for the record, Councilman Mays, let's hear. that regardless of Mr. whether Mr. Griggs voted or not, it would have failed. Point of information. And so let's just Give say me that. the vote count. The vote count was, Madam Clerk, do you want to, the vote count on your appeal? 
No. I mean, you're y'all really call yourself calling for a vote, did a roll call, ignored my points and bypassed. Do you remember what the vote was? Do you remember what the vote was? He did. Do you no, remember I don't what the know what the vote was. That's what was on your other time. appeal. Of uh, the problem. chair. It was your other appeal. No. So we've been working on an appeal. So, have, so, so point of order. It was an appeal. Point of order. What's your point of order? Where are we at? Are we in the middle of a vote? Is it a vote been the counted? Vote was That's my point. Where are we at? Council, I mean, Madam Clerk, what was the, the vote? The vote. Mr. Mays did not vote. But if he had voted, I'm assuming you would have voted yes. Now, don't assume how I would have voted. Just say, well, no, no, just no. say what the yeah, vote just count the was. Vote. I just asked what was the vote just count. Just say what the vote Because I thought who was in the middle of a vote. vote. Don't what assume my vote. Y'all really messing up. If I could announce the vote, please. That's what I asked. The vote would have been two yes and five no. You failed. And so, what was the motion? Appeal and the ruling of the chair. So, where do that put us at now? Back to the Mr. Grigg say he didn't separate his, right? No, he did not separate. He said that in the middle of this discussion. So, is he now saying that he ain't separating it or he is? He's not separating. Okay, so we, that puts us on the master resolution, I would think. And the person who separated them is gone. You separating them now? Well, if you was going to separate them, chair the meeting as if you didn't and be the last to speak on them because I would have separated one and I'm going to try to you get don't have, the I don't have a problem with chair. that. Thank you. You've been having a problem oh, with it. God. So could we do the master resolution? So, yes, roll call. Is there any discussion on the master resolution? Okay. Hearing none, Madam Roll Call. Ms. 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 Uh, Ms. Roll. Winfrey Carter. Excuse me. The the only thing that's been separated is 180431. And 428. Oh, and 28. Okay. Okay, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I'm going to separate the one Mr. Griggs didn't separate dealing with them water meters. Ain't that the one you was going to separate, Mr. Griggs? Uh, yes. And yes, what's, that, what's that number? Uh, 180. Four two five. It need to be separated. I'm gonna separate one eight zero four two five, and then on the application for the exemption certificate, Mr. Guerra, that project is in your ward. Yes, it is. And you seem to want that to go through. No questions, no benefits agreements. You satisfied with that? I am. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it not separated. The water fund budget amendments one eight zero four two seven. May I ask a question on that? That's that one point three million, Mr. Um, Newsom. We discussed that in committee. And what was that? Refresh my memory on that. That one point three million that for a total of uh, one point five. What is that? Just refresh my memory. Once you tell me, I'm gonna remember. I'm, I'm having Mr. Benzik come up, but that was a, that was an in dot uh, project o over on Stewart Street. Oh, that was the Stewart Street. Right. I don't need to hear no more. That's all I needed to know. That's finishing up that project. We want that to go through. And then the other one was that DOJ police thing in the city of Flint Remington been separated. The the the, the lawsuit ain't been separated, have it? The 430 wasn't separated and the 429 wasn't separated. You say the last two have been separated. Okay, I'm good. I'm ready to vote on the master resolution. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Madam Clerk, roll call. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? This is on the master resolution. What was that? Master resolution? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. 
The vote is um, six yes, zero no on the master resolution. First separation, 180425, Councilman Mays. Yeah, and the reason I separated that one, just like we looked, I think Davina and Mr. Branch looked, and we seen on July 23rd when that um, grant money looked like it was passed. And so people can go through this in a perfunctory manner if they want. But I take every resolution and these votes very seriously because I'm going to research the 23rd. Ain't no way I knew that had went by and we didn't try to move money. Mr. Branch think we might have moved some. If we did, I want to see who moved it and why they moved it to because I had been waiting for the detailed discussion on the um, block grant money, so it's no harm, no foul with me, Mr. Branch. But on this residential and commercial water meters, Mr. Benzie, now this money is different than the 10 to 18 million, because look what's happening with the 10 to 18 million. If we get approved for 10 to 18 million dollars in water meter money, we charging people. What is the cost of a water meter? Do you know a residential water meter, the five eighths or whatever? What's the cost of a water meter? Do you know? So it's it's dependent on size. Okay, I said residential five eighths, that type of thing. And, and I I believe we actually are charging one eighty five for the meter. What is the cost of the meter? Um, I think it's three fifty five. Well, I want to know the cost, and okay. I want to know what we charging because I'm getting. People telling me they have to pay 200 and something for a meter. And so that means if we get to do $10 million worth of meters on the Fed and state's dime and we charge them, that $10 million going to come back to us. And that's one of the only pots of monies that I can see happening like that. You follow what I'm saying, Ms. Winfrey Carter, where we get federal and state money and we fix a water main, that money is spent. We get state and federal money and we do 10 or $18 million in water meters and we charge Mr. Houston, you see, that money is recycled. And I don't think we didn't discuss what will happen now. That's why I'm asking how much they cost. Is we charging people partial costs or half costs? And if we do charge them, what are we going to do with that money? Keep recycling it in meters, and once we catch up on the meters and get them all replaced, if that's what we're going to do, then what are we going to do with the 10, 18 million? Have anybody thought about that yet? And if so, tell me what's the plan with the money, because I don't agree with charging residents for meters they don't own. They don't own them meters. We own them. They can't tamper with them. We're looking at the ordinance now. They can't tamper with them. They can't straight pipe them, but they show paying for them. What is it, a rental fee? What's the logic? What is we doing? What's, what's going on? What, what's your thoughts, Mr. Benzie? So, Ms. Chair, if I can, please. Um, through you to Mr. Mays, or Councilman Mays. Um, so, when we talk about meters currently, um, the city's position is that we provided a meter so in the event that that meter is stolen, it freezes and breaks, um, the resident tampers with it and ruins its, its uh, ability to function. At that point, the, the homeowner or the resident or the customer, um, they are obligated to buy a new meter. Let me ask this question, Mr. Benzie. If they move and turn the meter back in, do we give them their money back? We give them a, a partial credit on it. No, they should get it all. My position is this. Most people be in their houses sometime 10, 20, 30 years. You're going to get the money on the front end, and they're going to use it that whole time until it's replaced again in some cases. My position is I'm just raising an issue. I don't even know what I'd do with it yet. But if we buy meters and then we sell them or charge a fee, well, we charge a fee to get it. It ain't an installation fee, it ain't a rental fee, it ain't a purchase fee. What do you call the meter fee? 
so, so under the current situation, when we install a meter and we charge a customer for it, it's because the meter that was there has either been stolen, tampered with, broken, they freeze and break in the winter. Th those are all issues that are caused by, by the resident. They're not, no, they're not an issue of the, the city. The wear effect. and tear on the battery over the lifetime of the meter ain't caused by the resident. I'm not going to except that the resident then caused the battery not to function where we can't read the trans, you know, read yeah, it. We, that ain't the resident didn't call that. That just ordinary wear and tear as it relates to the battery. Would you agree or disagree with that? I agree with you. We don't charge residents when a, when a uh, meter has lived its life and it needs to be replaced. We're not charging a resident. For so that. this 10, 18 million will go into people's homes with no charge? Absolutely. Okay, but right now, now this 300,000 that we finna approve just as we approved before, these meters are going in with no charge or they being charged? It would be dependent on the situation. So again, if okay. the meter has been damaged in some way, then the customer would be obligated at that point to pay for it. Now if we have a, um, let's say we have one of our meters that's a late 90s, um, that the, bat the transponder battery has died, the meter is in good condition, Rob, it's just fa the battery Let me stop failed. you right, we, we let me stop you right there. So you telling me, if I check down in the water department, Amanda and every worker down there going to tell me if the customer ain't did something, they ain't paying for no water meter. Now that's what you stand and telling me, and I really don't think that's true. I think people paying deposits. I think they be in charge for water meters. So do y'all, you know for a fact that a person who ain't tampered with the meter, who needs a meter, ain't being charged if it ain't no funny business. Is that what I'm hearing you say? I would like to tell you I know as a fact, but I believe I know okay, as a fact. Okay, now you're talking. That's how I like to talk, Mr. Bender. You back cool with me because I'm telling you, I don't know it to be a fact. And whenever you stand here, if you don't know it to be a fact, Mr. Newsom, between you and Mr. Benzik, by the time we get the Finance Committee meeting, I'm going to support this. But by the time we get the Finance Committee meeting and as we move into the 10 and 18 million, Let's start taking a look at that. Mr. Benzik, I ain't smiled all day, but when you change that answer and say you don't know for sure, I don't know neither, and so I'm ready to keep moving. Good answer. We'll <laughs> I'm find glad, out. I'm glad I could help you out this morning. Well, yeah, you got me smiling. Thank you. I like good answers. Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call. This is on 180425, Ms. Mm -hmm. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? This is to separate? No. no. To vote. Voting for or against? Postpone? No. Oh, yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. The vote is uh, 6 yes, 0 no, and one eight zero four two five. There was a separation of one eight zero four two eight. 428 Councilman Mays, you wanted to say something about that resolution? Any discussion? Yeah. Um Madam Chair, the one on the we we on the we on one eight zero four two eight, and that's the eight million. We discussed that. That's the eight million um, going with the nine million. That's trying to get us up to the twenty six million. And so, ain't no way I'm gonna try to hold this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna support it. Um, I still might have separated it because the flow of money from the state to the city, regardless of what folks say on whatever station, I'm speaking for myself, Mr. Newsom, my job is to help make that money flow smooth. Our job is to help make it flow smooth. 
And Rob Benzing say, I'll adjust to try to help make it flow smooth. The scope of that hearing ain't got nothing to do specifically per se with Hydrovac. Because my colleagues, I'm seeing people learning what that is. And they learning about the scope of contracts. And they learning about the specs on how wide a hole should be dug. I'm knowing from 125 East Russell, I came out with my pajama bottoms on. I was incognito with my pajama bottoms on, and I was learning obtusively what was, <laughs> what was going on, how, how much digging was done on each side. Now, I ain't going to say how much digging was done on the sidewalk side. Was it two feet, Pastor Gilbert? Was it three feet? Was it four feet? Or was it 10 feet at 125 East Russell? Was 125 East Russell spliced? We did look at it in the basement. We did look at it at the curb box. But we sure didn't look four feet, six feet, 10 feet. So I'm looking at my neighbors. So all of this talk about how many feet we know adds to the restoration program, Mr. Parks. Goyette's restoration program should be a little more lucrative because it's more to restoration. I think we got some of this discussion. We put this on what, Mr. Garrett? Governmental ops or finance? I think we put it on finance, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. So Mr. Parks, the administration, Mr. Newsom, whoever need to show up, it's going to be an interesting discussion. And I think we're going to get there. I think I'm going to try to talk to some of my buddies in the administration, whoever they are. I'd like to see, <laughs> you see you one of them, Mr. News. I'd like to see us reach a compromise on this thing. So what I'm going to do on the transfer, the budget amendment for $8 million, Mr. Newsom, I know what that is. Would Mr. Newsom, Madam Chair, could I ask him a quick question? Mr. Yeah. Newsom, would it be fair to say that we still going to try to pull another $9 million in there to get to $26 million? Am I counting right? You, you are correct. Actually, next week, um, actually later this week, the ad board, the administrative board meets in Lansing, and I have a meeting with City Attorney uh, Wheeler, I think Monday, Wednesday morning, to talk about the mechanics of getting some more money in here after this. So we'll that's, do this in waves. That's the meeting that I was talking about on the 20th or 22nd. It was delayed. This is 28th. Was it delayed? It was always the 28th. I, I always thought it was the 28th. And I thought it was the 20th, 22nd. So you telling me on the next council agenda, we gonna see official communications in the communications section mm -hmm. of the agenda about that meeting. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> My hope is we kidding. have another budget amendment for you guys to look at. But That's the budget amendment. amendment might come shortly after that. Yes. Yeah, have they gave us it. any indications of where they headed, or we don't know till after that meeting? We 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 won't. Uh, I'm not. I'm hesitant to say. You hesitate to say yeah. then, hesitate and don't say. But you got some inklings. I should put some toothpicks under your finger and try to figure out what's <laughs> happening. But I can wait. I'm patient. I, I figure it's in good hands. Okay. So that's separation, eight million. I don't know what Ms. Fields' position was, but I'm going to support it. I remember the discussion in committee. I appreciate y'all um, indulging me. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Then I have some discussion. Um, I have some problems with it, but because this council is so late, light in votes, I'm going to support it. I don't like it. The fact that it says it goes into effect October 1st of 2017 yes. to September 30th, 2018, I'm just making, I'm going to support it. Please don't talk me out of it. I'm making my statement for the record. We've known about it. Mm -hmm.
And so the fact that it's kind of like been sitting off to the side doing whatever, under paperwork or whatever, I have a concern with that. But I'm going to support it tonight against what I would have originally done if we had a, 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 a full council. And so I don't, we've already discussed it. I shared my concern with you in committee. It had not changed. Mm -hmm. But I am going to ha help move this one forward. Thank you. And so I just want to say that for the record. If there's no further discussion, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. I should hold it up until we reach a deal on HydroVac. Oh. But I won't. Maybe the next $9 million I will. Mr. Fox, I should bargain hard. I'm getting soft, ain't I? Rob, I should hold this up until we reach a deal on HydroVac. But the players are in here, so you say move it and talk Let's deals talk some later. Other day. Let's talk some other you day. You got it. All right. I'm going to be if asking I questions. If I be mad Mr. at myself, Mr. I know Newsom, that little, I'm blame you. I know that, that you gave a, a breakdown, but I, I'm going to be wanting to see what invoices were covered under this $8 million and the dates of those invoices, just so you know. And so if there's no further discussion, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. The vote is six yes, zero no, and one eight zero four two eight. Next separation was 180431. Did you have something, Mr. Mays, or no? Yeah. Um, Mr. Newsom, what's happening with that $750,000 we talked about? You know, before I, you know, I might need some leverage. Convince me that you got confidence that the state going to get off of that $1,000 cap. They going to release that 750000 I mean, this won't do nothing but hurt myself, Pastor um, Gilbert. I might not can bargain with this, but I just want to hear something about that 750000 before I'm, I'm, I vote I'm, on this package. I'm glad you asked. So one of the things that but we're thank doing, Pastor Gilbert for reminding me that. I appreciate that. So where we are right now, that cap is still in place. It is 1200 right now. That's 1200 But there's one thing that's important. That the don't state, do Ms. Johnson no good. It, but it's, well, there's something else you need to know. Okay. And that's only supposedly be applied to the water side. And so we are finalizing. We should have it done next couple of days. Don't the finalize a no, cap no, of 1200 What I'm saying is this. It still needs to be presented to this body. Oh, as a okay. a grant agreement. And then you I wouldn't agree with down. that. Okay. Now, who is the contact person for the state? So Do that would that would be saying? this is this has been I to say negotiated or discussed. Larry Steckelberg has been the key POC, but it's still going to be a DEQ grant. And you understand that if we move forward with this hearing thing, as I'm suggesting, that's what we would try to get from you contact persons. Because if I can't get them from you, I just call Rich Baird there <laughs> and try to get them from him. He used to love to come down here and talk to us. And then he told me when Kerry Nim was here that he didn't mind coming talking before the council, but they requested that it be private. So, <laughs> you know, I think if people ain't been blowing smoke up my dress pants, then um, I think we gonna get some information um, and whoever these folks is. But I'm gonna advise against a $1,200 cap we didn't give no 30-year deal, because I know how I played my vote, just some measly $750. I'm glad you had me ask this question, <laughs> Pastor Gilbert. If 750000 a seat on the board, we thought we was into some real big-time negotiations. We had a federal mediator in the back room, all nine council people present. I thought these were some real deal Holyfield negotiators and men of good faith. And now I'm sitting months later tripping. I'm tripping. You know why I'm tripping? Because 
they've taken our kindness for weakness. And when you take my kindness for weakness, I'm a nice guy sometimes. But Miss Wheeler, you're going to have to help me on this one. Don't let me down because some of my colleagues want special counsel. I'm going to try this administration, Mr. Davis, and I'm going to see how a hearing go. I'm going to tell my colleagues that's here, don't fall for the okie doke. If you put your work in, Mr. Guerra, you deserve something. If I put my work in, I want my due. I don't want Kate Fields second guessing me as to how I'm going to conduct the hearing. I don't want people saying, we're going to take your work, Mr. Mays, and turn it over to Mr. Winfrey and nobody else because we can't trust you. I'm proud of what I did here tonight on the rotating vote, the points of orders, young ladies. School started yet? It's getting close. Did y'all enjoy this meeting? You with your dad, Mr. Houston? Mr. Houston, you running for the school board? I'm going to vote for you. I'm going to support you. And I enjoyed these ladies. I hope y'all enjoyed the council meeting from the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to support this bond, um, Mr. Newsom. Thank but you. my point is this. When I got folks like Mr. Houston watching with his girls, when I got the community watching, I'm going to let them know that the state trying to screw us when we negotiate a measly 750000 for the estimated water and sewer bills. Folks got $6,000 bills. We done put them on hold for over a year. Mm -hmm. Snyder. Governor Snyder finna leave out of office. We ain't got no appointment yet. One, two, three, four, five. We still got a quorum. And so I'm gonna support this. And you want it passed. Y'all already described it to us a no harm, no foul. I'm gonna play ball with you, Mr. Newsom. And I sure hope, Miss Wheeler, that I can I'm gonna pray on my heart getting hard. Because I'm so giving people the benefit of the doubt. Not you, Mr. Newsom. Not you, Ms. Wheeler. I'm referring to the state let us down. And Ms. Pastor Gilbert, I wouldn't have know that if you hadn't uh, asked me to do the 750. So I'm going to go ahead and vote for this on the strength of what you told me in committee meeting. And that's how I'm going to play ball. But I got a bone to pick. When you bring that agreement, I'm going to try to send it back to them. Okay. Who they've been negotiating with, you? Yes, uh, it's been primarily me. City <laughs> attorney's been involved as well. <laughs> y'all couldn't get no sense in them. Didn't y'all tell them how we was going to respond? Uh, that's every day. The second, third, and fourth thing out of my mouth was, wait till I take this to council. Well, we're going to get to meet them. I'm confident of that. I mean, we're going to ask them to come down. If they don't come down, I'm going to ask they be subpoenaed in. So I'm already hearing folks want to fight subpoenas. Mm -hmm. How do they know why they don't want to cooperate? I'm up for the fight. Thank you, Councilman Mayor. Thank you. Any further discussion? Well, I have some. And I just want to say for the administration that I am sorry that this council has had so many representatives that have walked out. Because unlike my other colleagues, I spoke with Steve Marquardt, uh -huh. who is the EPA person over the wind funds. Mm -hmm. We had a very good conversation. But one of the things, as much as this is the normal practice, mm -hmm. this is close to what we did with the 40 million, but the 40 million have more details, contract, yeah, we got the copy. I don't know if you pulled it. But I what, what, I'm just gonna say what, cause I did my research. I don't know about everybody else. But one of the things that Mr. Newsom said mm -hmm. is with this bond, we will only be able to spend what is reimbursable through the wind fund. Yeah. And that is not true. Okay, so please correct me. Well, you can spend what you believe to be 
but there's no guarantee. This, and, and, and I want to thank Rob, because Rob, I went back and looked at the tape, and what you said was a fairer assessment. I'm not saying that you wouldn't do what you could to spend the money on those things that were forgivable under the wind funds. But we don't have a way to ensure that that is the case. And I sent an email saying I wanted to understand originally why the $431,000, do you know what I'm talking about? $433,000. Was it, yeah, that wasn't approved? It, I don't know that it wasn't approved. It wasn't approved for the $40 million, but it's, that doesn't mean it's not approved or reimbursable. We've already had discussions with the state of using another bottom of money, which I described to you all two weeks ago that we're going to use what's left of phase three. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned okay. that what I communicated seems to be inaccurate. I'd love to understand. Well, I'm just telling you what Steve my said. Knowledge. I said to Steve. my knowledge. Is that I understand that he said, look, we don't get involved. This is the process that the state and the city have, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we don't have the ability to ensure that the way it's spent uh -huh. by your government is imposed. Does that make sense? Mm, I, I, I don't see how that shows that what I said was inaccurate. I just have I to did. look back at the tape. I think what I said was, is consistent with what he's saying. We know, they have no control mechanism, but that doesn't mean the state doesn't. The state is the fiduciary over, the, over this money through the DWARF program. Right. I'm talking to somebody from the EPA. So I'm no, no, no. It wasn't about talking to somebody from the EPA. Uh -huh. and, and let me just explain this to you. I understand. This is, to me, this is like a line of credit. This is something, Mr. Um, Pastor Gilbert, when the um, Brennan Center needed to have funds available to them so that they could spend and then it be reimbursed later, which is why the city, for those years, allocated 10000 for the um, Brennan. In Brennan. Brennan and Brennan then the Hustle. other, right? And so what, what that was to do is to give them the leg up to be able to take care of things that needed to be taken care of right. ahead of time and then send it in for reimbursement. Okay. But what it didn't do is ensure that what they were spending it on was guaranteed to be reimbursed. So that line of credit was there to make sure that they got done what needed to be done. So, uh, and they hoped that it would be reimbursable, but it didn't necessarily guarantee but that it also, was reimbursable. I guess I'm a little confused because you also understand that we have submitted a project plan for- That hasn't been approved yet. That hasn't been approved yet, but we're not going to work on anything until we get the project plan approved. Right, but so we're having to approve this before that plan is approved. Right, but we still would not work on, we will still work on $80 million worth of projects, which is what I said and Mr. Benzik said. No, Maybe. actually I went back and listened to what the tape. And what Mr. Benzik said was, Regardless, there is, and God, I wrote it down in my little tab. He said, he, re he, referenced, he referenced more, more than $80 million worth of projects. Oh, so I, I did bring What it. we're saying is, Mr. is that. Just, no, I'm going to tell you what Mr. Benzik said. Mr. Benzik said, so in the event that they don't approve all of the projects, what will happen is the money will fall into the main replacement. We have hundreds of millions of dollars of water main replacements that need to be done so we can exhaust any money they may not approve. Yes. So there's a, if you remember, the project plan had $132 million worth of project total, right? We, said, we expect and know we will get $80 million worth of approved project work. And so my point is, you got $80 million worth of funding, $80 million worth of projects that will be approved. So that's the whole point. You get the project approval over here, you do that work, it's been approved. The, the loan is going to be eligible for reimbursement because you've already got the project plan approved. So I don't understand where the inaccuracy is. And I'm not being defensive, I just want to understand education. I don't want you to be, education. but my problem is we have a plan that's not approved. But we can't, we have a 45 day waiting period on the I funding that, and that. we can't start working. I get that. And so you, 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 you can say, but I'm just saying for me, mm -hmm. I understand that 45 days. I get that. But the reality is I am being asked to approve something 
based on what hasn't been approved yet. I'm sorry that the 45 days is there. I am sorry. And so I, I'm saying it's really, it's really disheartening that so much has gone on today that three of the other, other colleagues have been walked out and that it comes down to somebody who has expressed from the very beginning that I had reservations about this. And so maybe it might be a recommendation to table this and well, maybe set up a special meeting. I don't know. Well, I'd hate for it to fail I would based on having five votes here I would and one of them is a no. I would suggest instead that if you have, if there's something that Mr. Benzik can cause, can give you more comfort, because I'm not really sure where the disconnect is and what you're hearing, what I'm hearing, where the inconsistencies are, or, or what Mr. Benzik is saying in, between me and I, where the inconsistencies are. I'm still a little confused. I wish there was something I can tell you that, that would clarify this. Um, I'm not really sure what to say. I just do not want us to table this yet again, because there is consensus that if we continue to push this back, along with the 45-day waiting period, once the project plan is approved, we can't start work on it because we don't have the funding to start. So I'm, I'm just confused, and I really want to understand how do I clarify this for you, mm -hmm. and I'm at a loss. I so whatever it. it would take, let me know, I know please. Mr. Yeah, if it's Mr. Benzik, if it's, we can get, we can get some, another subject matter expert here, I don't know what to do. Um, did you want to say before Ms. Wheeler or? Yeah, sure. I'd love Please. To. Yeah, um, just because of uh, constraints, I also wasn't here during committee during this time as well. That was when I had to leave early uh, for the family situation. I would want to make a motion to postpone back to committee, uh, finance committee. So there's a motion on the floor to postpone the finance committee. Is there any support? There's a motion to postpone this to finance. Oh, Mr. Davis. M Madam Chair. <clears throat> oh, no. I second. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Davis. Wow. Madam Chair, I don't know how convincing it would be but the seeds of doubt, what I speak of from time to time, even with the activists that was in the room earlier, is affecting how we're doing business because the city divided against itself, as you can see, it ain't gonna stand. Um, it's plain to see when truth comes forward, sometimes we have to make up our mind to follow what's right or do we just follow what's popular. Sometimes I could pre preconceive one way and I could be solidly determined to go that path, but inside of that, I could see that, you know what? I, I might be wrong, and I just do something to, to benefit of the whole community. I say that to say this. Sometimes it's hard to get concrete evidence, but I have to have believe, got to have the ability to believe in who leading me or who I'm listening to. Now, some people up here, is hell bent on the failure of this city and this administration. I've said that before time, but I know what I'm saying. I'm not saying it to be disrespectful, but I'm saying this. This is some important business that we delaying over and postponing over and over. I don't want a second of postponement, but if it's going to fail, I'm going to have to. And what I'm saying, the seed study grow, Mr. Mays, you are a very brilliant man. But when you got weak people, and I'm going to say weak because that's what it is. If I'm not leading by my own self. I'm leading by somebody else, which they pertain to me as being weak. Every little inkling, whether it's a hearing or whatever it is, all they need is a reason to doubt what's going on. And that's what we're seeing here today. We can't keep on doing this foolishness playing with grant money. Grant money, whether you know it or not, I deal with grant funding. It's a fiduciary, you got paperwork, you can't willy-nilly and do what you want to do with that money. But you got people that don't understand how that protocol go. I deal with a lot of grants. Community Foundation, Roof My, Hab uh, Habitat, and on and on. People up here, they holding these seats don't understand business. This community is going to fail with this foolishness we doing. We got to get to the place where just take chance on your leadership. Now, just like now, we got a governor. Same thing earlier. We got to get to the place we're tired of this politicking when at the benefit of people that's hurting, we call them stumbling blocks. This money here is time sensitive. We can't keep postponing, postponing, especially 
Either we're going to believe in ministration or we're not. You, certain things we do causes unbelief. And this here stuff now is starting to root and start growing the seed of doubt. We can't sustain ourselves as a city, keep doing what we're doing, and I'm done. Madam Chair. Was Councilman Mays? Get you call on me. I do. Yeah, it ain't but five of us left. The last of the Mohegans. Five in order to ladies, twins, baby girl. It take five votes out of five to move something forward. Chairperson Vice President Galloway has indicated <laughs> that she ain't going to vote for this. So that means the vote would be four to one, and it would fail. The only thing that we can do now is try to cut a deal. And I'm going to try to cut a deal. Ms. Galloway, in my opinion, with that meeting coming up on the 28th that I thought was the 20th, $132 million project plan has been put in place. We need to move this forward. I'll cut a deal. My vote of your choice whether it's an appeal, whether it's a vote on something, I'm willing to trade. You get to say, Maze, you owe me one. And I'm going to be so do. Don't hurt me on this deal. But you sure will have a deal. Because I think this needs to move. I don't want to do nothing to hold up the big money and the flow of money from the state. I don't want to put on us. And when they go to that meeting on the 28th, unless we had a special meeting coming up, we won't be in the net. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm going to support. Not, I'm not going to support the motion to postpone, Mr. Garrett and Mr. Davis. I'm going to count the votes on the motion to postpone. I'm going to cut a public deal with Ms. Galloway. I might not have nothing to offer. She might say, I don't care how you vote. You ain't going to know me one, because she might not like the deal. But that's all I can do. But if it ain't a deal, Ms. Galloway, then I'm going to simply ask, let's go ahead and approve it, and then drill the hell out of them because it ain't, I don't think, the city in. This bond was described as a bond that we ain't going to have to pay back. That was discussed in council meeting. I think it's clear that this is like a perfunctory bond. It's a bond that need to be got if Mr. Newsom them and Rob Benzik them is telling the truth without being put up under oath. This bond need to be got, need to be put in place, but it ain't like we're going to have to pay $7 million a year for $28 million like we're doing on the KWA. So I'm not going to vote to postpone, and I'm going to still appeal to approve, but if it fails, then the work is going to get great because that's a six-vote reconsideration it's going to also have to be a special meeting that I'm going to try to get set up in the next two, three days, because when is the 28th? What is the date today? Tomorrow. 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 What's the date today? The 27th? Oh, no, Ms. Galloway, I want this to go up to Lance, and I want it to be approved. That's part of the $132 million package. I can't vote to postpone. And I'm going to appeal. Please give me a vote, Ms. Galloway, on this one. Please, please, please. OK, thanks. Madam Attorney. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if, it, if it's going to fail, then I mean, it's be probably better for it to be postponed anyway, because the simple fact is that, like I said, we either have to do a motion for reconsideration or it's going to 
be off for, for 30 days. And it's just so important to this community to get this $80 million of 100% forgivable, 0% interest coming to the city for a project that was already approved by this council. So like I said, this is something that um, the council has shown support for for this plan, but we can't do this without the council. Um, so, and so, like I said, if you need more time, um, you know, then it, it'll be better than the whole thing failing. I mean, like I said, it does put us behind um, because we cannot do this without an authorizing resolution by the council to have the 45 day notice period run. So, like I said, continue on, you know, projects have to be done, and this is really nicely done at this point because it's going to kind of run concurrently, in a sense, with the EPA approving what the project plan is already approved by the city council. So, it, it, in that sense, it makes sense, but like I said, I, I, I certainly want this to go forward and and also, by the way, there were additional questions that were asked at the last meeting, and those questions with regard to um, the citation, which also was included in the resolution itself, we also provided separate citations circling the sections in the WIN Act and Act 227, and also a subpart in the Safe Drinking Water Act Part 54 to make sure that you all had the exact citation of um, the why they were able to do 100% forgivable loan and also 0% interest as they did on the previous $40 million that was received by the council. Madam Chair, Amaze. this was moved to be postponed until when did Mr. Guerra say in his motion? He didn't say when. Finance. To finance. I'm going to vote no on the Board postponement. Time certain. And then the only deal that I can't trade on is my president vote. Everything else is up for discussion, so I had to throw that in. And so that might be a deal breaker. But I'm going to vote no on the postponement. I'm going to take my chance on trying to get this through. This is a major project. 80 million, no harm, no foul type of bond. And um, I look forward to the discussion on the motion to approve. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I really think we need to um, go ahead and approve this. <laughs> this, is, this is almost stopping our project. Now, I, I don't want to postpone this. I want this to, to go ahead and be approved. I mean, Madam Vice President. We're going to be whining to you. You might give us a chance. I, I, I think we need to continue <laughs> with, uh, with the project and, and move this forward. And then let's just go back to the table and get all the information that um, you need to get. I mean, I've read everything and I fully understand what this is about. So. And I'm just going to say for my colleagues, that is exactly why there are nine council people. And, and I am disappointed when I hear people talk about seeds of doubt and all of that, that has nothing to do with it. The reality is communities rise or fail on bond debt. Bond debt that is not forgiven causes increases. And I'm not saying that everything that will be done is not going to be forgivable. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is there is nothing, once this bond is approved, that causes us to be able to govern and say, hey, make sure you do, don't spend it on this. Hey, this might be wind funded. Hey, this may not be wind funded. And, 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 and it's not about my colleagues appealing to me, because I'm not negotiating votes. 
I have never negotiated a vote since I've been here on 13. I don't vote yes for you so that you can vote yes for me. I vote yes for you because I support what you do. And hopefully when something comes up in my ward and or that I'm passionate about, you will feel the same way and you vote your conscience and what you think. And so I'm, I'm, I'm disheartened when I hear people talk about seeds of doubt. The reality is communities get under emergency managers because finances are not done properly. Once this bond debt is incurred, this council doesn't get to say what's being done, and the proof of that is we haven't been able to say what's been really done through phases one through four. And I'm not, I'm talking about me. The only reason why the questions, at least from me, have been asked is because there's been so much in the media. Because when you did try to ask questions, it seems like there was, you asked in too much. You shouldn't be getting in the administration's business. That's what they do. But the truth of the matter is this council is financially responsible for this city's spending. And so I'm not going to allow any of my colleagues to make me feel bad about the fact that I know what my role is, I know what my responsibilities are, and I'm supposed to be knowing how I feel about bond debt and how it's issued. And I get that we hope the state is going to approve our projects, but the state hasn't been a good friend to me and they haven't been a good friend to this community. And so to hear my colleagues talk about a deal, the grand deal that we approved, this month is August, nine months ago, and they still ain't talking to us about the $633,000 that was supposed to be a part of that grand deal. And still there's nobody from this community that's on that K um, the Great Lakes Water Authority board so no offense to anybody, there's no leveraging chips. This is not about that. This is about me being comfortable doing my research. You can say that the, he's the EPA if you want to, but he is a person that is responsible for looking at those wind funds as well. And so I started my way down. I'm doing my due diligence. No offense to anybody. You guys want to call a special meeting anytime this week. I'm pretty much open, except after, after on Thursday, I cannot be in a meeting until at least 4 o'clock. Tomorrow, I have a meeting at noon. Outside of that, I am willing. And, and I'm just saying, I'm not going to be forced up against the wall. Again, it is, it, it's really disheartening that three people walked out because of the way that this meeting went. And I do not want to hinder the progress of this city, but I'm not going to feel guilty about signing my vote to an $80 million bond. I don't have to, and if somebody wants to recall me because I'm trying to be physically responsible, I am sorry, no offense to anybody. I just don't feel good about it, but I was supposed to be one of nine, and now I found myself one of five. And that's unfortunate, but I'm not going to bend, and it's no offense to my colleagues. And if you feel good about it, feel good about it. But I'm not going to feel bad about it because you think I should feel bad about it. And so that's my first, Ms. Um, Ms. Um, Wheeler, you can speak if you'll let the attorney and then Councilman Mays, you can have the floor. I, like I said, I, I think we all want this to go through. And like I said, we, the community needs this $80 million. It's not, like I said, you and you need to speak to specifically some of the things surrounding the bond. But again, this is a 100% forgivable uh, loan, interest-free, just as the one was that we did before. Um, and also, we did have uh, our bond council here, as far as available um, for phone, by, by phone by at 4 o'clock today and the meeting kind of morphed into something else, so we never were able to get her on the phone, but like I said, I'll make her available um, by phone for the next meeting, so you can also have it from our council and how we've been doing things internally to make sure, like the last one that we had, that it's again 100% forgivable and 0% interest. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, it get a little risky on motions for reconsideration. It's less risky with a vote of five. 
What I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm going to ask for a special meeting on Wednesday. And maybe by that time, President Winfrey will be here. Tomorrow is the um, tomorrow is the um, 28th, and Mr. Dumas, you were right. A recess. I could move the recess, and then we might not have to post. I see what you said, Ms. Galloway, but I didn't. I, I, my position wasn't downing you. You got a legitimate position because at some point we going to have to use our votes and leverage to pop information loose and things like that. So I wasn't, and I'm knowing, I said it, I say she don't like the deal. And so I said that in my conversation. I done been around long enough to know who want a deal and who don't, but you know, that's what politics is sometimes. It's wheeling and dealing, and I think it's okay if you do it in the open. Um, some people think it's okay behind the scenes. It's been dark room, back room, politics. I'm just a person, I'm kind of wow. I'm trying to change politics. I just talk. I just talk. Because I think I can make it to heaven. Possibly. Possibly. And so when you just talk and you be open and you talk, Mr. Parks, Sometimes you see what happened in this job. You want to be open and honest, and it's just so many rules. So I could move to recess this meeting, Mr. Dumas, versus a special meeting. I heard you say that. And then I'll see if and when Mr. Winfrey could be here, and then we might have five votes. So I would move um, to recess this meeting until 5 o'clock tomorrow. You want Wednesday, Miss Galloway? I might want tomorrow. I don't know when. Wednesday, Wednesday is when committees sometimes be. I'm thinking people might be available, but if I recess it and they meet tomorrow, they still won't have the word. So, you know, the substitute motion or the motion was until finance committee meeting. I don't want to vote that down and then try to do a subs another motion. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lead that motion there. And I would ask that this meeting recess until Wednesday at 5, Tuesday at 3, 2. Let's do this. I'm going to move that we recess, and in the discussion of the five of us here, let's see what the day is going to be, and we'll do a substitute motion with the specific day and time. So I would move that we recess until tomorrow or the next day, and then we firm that up in discussion. So, Mr. There's a motion. Um, Madam Chair, I second. Councilman Davis has been moved and seconded. State the length of the recess, Councilman. Um, Madam Chair, I would want to hear when these five could meet. When is the best meeting day for y'all, Tuesday or Wednesday? Any day. For me, it'd be earlier in those two days. Earlier? Or let me, because I got a meeting at 3.30, I know, on Wednesday. Around what time? Noon? 10. 10 in the morning. What you think, Mr. Um, Newsom? When is the committee gonna meet? We don't know. You know, Angela. Well, let's shoot for ten, Mr. Garrett. Miss Galloway, Wednesday? is ten bad for you? No, nope. Wednesday. Are you talking Wednesday or Tuesday? Y'all tell me. Well, we can, what, any, any way we could contact President? Uh, Herb to see when he could be here? We're going to need Yeah, that if you call him and he pick up right now. <laughs> he might pick up for do, Jerry. I get it. My meeting, I can end it early at 3.30. Would five work better for Wednesday? Whatever works for Herb and y'all and us and Miss Galloway. To, we get to talk openly right here. What time you thinking, Miss Winfrey? Yeah. yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday, because I think we can do this in about a half an hour. Or an hour. We're going to be in and out. Be quick. 
-hmm. It's going to be an in and out. We're going to recess and then readjourn. Yes, and we'll see what we get. If we get here. Five Wednesday. You okay with that? Five o'clock when? Wednesday. Wednesday. I tell you what, but it it misses that it misses. So I think we going I think we gonna get to where we need to get to. It's just a matter of when we get there. So Rob Benzik, he answers for Rob. What we see? What time? Mr. Garrett wanted 10. That's five, five words. It's 5.30 and later is the better. Later. Five Wednesday. Five. That's fine. Five. 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 Councilwoman. Yes, sir. Five. Five Wednesday. Okay, so I would. What time? Then give us a name. <coughs> Four o'clock work. Sounds good. Mr. Garrett said okay. Okay, so who was that you were talking to? Mr. Winfrey. Mr. Winfrey can't talk to us by proxy. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. We got it, we got it. Okay, so we, I would do a substitute motion for this meeting to recess until four o'clock Wednesday, which would be Wednesday the 29th. Mr. Garrett? I second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays? Since we're going to recess, I would like to say this in the discussion on this motion, because when we vote, we're going to recess. Mm -hmm. My discussion with you is keep the faith. Even though it was maybe seem a little rough in committee meeting, keep the faith. Even though it might seem a little rough out here, it's supposed to be rough. That's why when you withdrew your warning, it's okay. Just keep the faith. It can be rough. If folks want to leave and talk, let them talk. When they talk, I talk. So it's been a decent meeting. Keep the faith. I don't tell people stuff just to talk cavalierly. Mr. Parks, keep the faith. And so that's what I'm ending the day. Um, Mr. Davis, keep the faith. I'm not going to tell Mr. Dumas to keep the faith because I'm watching him out the corner of my eye. But keep the faith. I appreciate you, Mr. Dumas, for coming up with the idea to recess. Mr. Houston, glad to see you and the girls here again. Look like I'm going to be voting Houston for school board. And so Houston for school board, three people on the ballot. Now keep in mind, Miss Perry might get me to change my mind, but right now I'm Houston for school board. All right. Y'all want me to young ladies vote Houston? I might be very well voting Houston for school board. Y'all going to, well, I ain't going to say no more. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good meeting. Bumps and bruises don't bother. All I say is keep the faith, keep honest and talking, but I'm not going to let them beat up on me, Miss Winfrey Carter. If it's Miss Galloway, Miss Worthy, Miss Fields, Mr. Grigg, or even Mr. Garrett, or even A.C. Dumas on 1420, even if it's Pastor Gill, but at that mic, I'm coming back at y'all. God bless you, and may God keep you. And so what do they say? God bless the citizens of the city of Flint. Can I say amen? <laughs> amen. Anyone else? Mr. Davis? This council comment? Yes. Well, this is, once we take a vote, there's nothing else that can be done because we're recessing the meeting. So if you want to say something, this would be the appropriate time. Well, I would like to say once again, I, we got to deal with what it is, the, the, the doubt that's in the confidence. Let me use the word confidence. We got to build this confidence up because just because you've been doing something so many years, you, you could actually be doing it wrong. 
If once this council get the hang of unity with this administration, we're going to go where we need to go in a direction in a hurry. And, and that's the whole gist of it. I done watched as Mr. Mays with the Jackie Poplars carrying them. That was the wrong motive, the wrong spirit. Once we get to, don't, I'm sure the administration don't want nobody to fail. I'm sure we don't want to go backwards. But we, I mean, there's no confidence in a Harvard grad. Mr. Newsom know what he's doing. We got to have confidence. If you get an airplane, I don't know who's flying that plane. I got to have confidence in the pilot. So far, we winning. But why were we hindering the success other than political reasons? We got a lot of stuff to hurdle. Some of us got to make adjustment. But people saw in this seat of discord, and it's starting to show, Pastor. And that's all I'm saying, and I am done. Anybody else? Did you have something, Ms. Winfrey Carter? And Councilman Davis, I agree with you. You know, in order for this city to move forward, we got to build a trust. And in order for the citizens, the residents of this city to trust, we as a council, we got to work together with the, the administration, and we got to trust. We got to move forward. We got to move forward. And, and I'm just saying, I'm, I'm going to shut down all foolishness, OK? There's an elephant in the room, and we got to shut it down. We got to shut it down, or we're not going to be able to, to move. And that's all I got to say. Jesus. We got to have Jesus. I just want to say for the record that um, I hope that my colleagues get to the point where they can separate the elephant in the room from doing the, the, the job that we were elected to do. And it is disheartening for me. And Councilman Mays, I want to thank you. Because Councilman Mays and I are the only two council people that have been here since 2013. And so my point is, when, when you have people saying that you're doing it wrong, I'm not saying that I'm doing it right. I'm saying that I'm do, do, doing due diligence. Because at the end of the day, my vote is all that I have. And I'm always willing to explain to the constituents that elected me why I made a financial decision, because unlike some of my colleagues, that is a part of my responsibility. When I hear words like, you think you know, or you're sowing a seed of doubt, and we need to trust the administration, this is not about trusting the administration. This is about debt. And I spoke to somebody that was willing to get a line of credit for another organization. And I shared with them, when you get a line of credit, you put your own, your own credit on the line. And so as much as we hope that it will be done a certain way, the state has not proven themselves to be great partners in this as well. And so something that seems like it's reimbursable and forgivable, the state has shown that they can definitely come in and say, you know what, we're not covering that. And so I don't want this council to get it twisted. I don't think I know everything, but I do know that bond debt is bond debt none the same. This community, under the, the governor, took on a bond debt through the KWA that they couldn't even afford. And so all I'm saying is on my watch, I'm doing my job. And so for those of you that are comfortable that it got elected in November, that you're already comfortable with signing off on the debt, then do you. But stop trying to make elephants in the room seem like this is wrong. Again, Councilman Mays, I want to thank you. I do stand on my principles. Again, I'm a vote of one of nine. I will be glad when my colleagues just rest on their own vote and stop, stop antagonizing and or um, coming against people the way that they vote. We are in a democracy. I have a right to vote the way that I am consciousable for, if that's a good word. I made it up. But the seventh ward can speak as well. And so thank you guys for tonight. Um, I do not compromise my vote. I vote for you because I support your project, Councilman Guerra, and I'm never going to come to you and say, Councilman Guerra, if you vote for me, I'll vote for you. I'm not doing that. 
Either I respect you and I support what you want, or I don't. And I hope that we'll get to the point where we start respecting Madam it. Madam Chair. Councilman May. So when we recess at this point, when we come back out of recess Wednesday, then we'll be finishing up this main city council agenda. So right. we should be at probably what? This council last discussion or Well, whatever. this last, once we dispose of however we're going to do with this resolution, then, then we, we should be moving right through the rest agenda. of the agenda. Correct. Uh -huh. And um, Mr. Guerra, unlike Ms. Galloway, I will wheel and deal with the votes. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, hearing all this, if there, is there any more discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call on the motion to vote. Recess. The recess. Motion. That's it. Thank Until you, Madam Wednesday. Chair. Yes. Till Wednesday at 5 4. 4, 4, 4 p.m. I got that in my guide. Uh, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. And could I say this little tidbit before we recess? Ms. Brown has known me for years. And believe me, if I say this is a decent meeting, it's a decent meeting, but I leave no stone unturned. So when you see me deal and speak a certain way, you're going to also see me communicate with it. So you didn't heard me to communicate as to Ms. Um, Galloway and to Ms. Brown. You didn't hear me say nothing to Ms. Wheeler, which I ain't at this time. Thank you. Okay. Now y'all have to figure that out. I know what I said. Yeah. Okay. okay. May I call Please. Okay, she May. laughed. <laughs> Mr. Mays. Ms. Wheeler know what I said. The answer would be yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Okay, the vote is um, five yes, zero no, to recess until Wednesday, 4 p.m. We are in recess till Wednesday at 4 p.m.